ready? Yep, you're good to go. Now, the announcement is made that adequate notice this meeting has been given and is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at second, the New Jersey Upper Home Community Act. Nora, please call the roll. Mr. Berkowitz. Here. Mr. Toskowitz. Here. Mr. Kaplan. Here. Mr. Mozzarella. Here. Mr. Parikh. Here. Mr. Reddy. Present. Chairman Ira Kane. Present. We have our board planner, Mr. Chadwick. Present. Our board engineer, Mr. Holloway, and our board attorney, Mr. King. Present. Sort of pledge of allegiance. Somebody stole the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> At this point in this evening's meeting, is there any member of the public that has any business to be brought to this board that is not on this evening's agenda? Yeah. You haven't seen them. I guess we're going to write into the cases, huh, Laura? Hmm? Sorry? Nothing, nothing huh? else. We're ready, we're ready for it. Ready to go right into it. Application 2328, Bethany Church, 419 East Halsey Road. D variants to convert a single family dwelling to a two family dwelling. <laughs> Uh, Davies Law Firm, Hackensack, New Jersey, on behalf of Bethany Church, seat to my right, Pastor Ross. You may proceed. Thank you. It's not really converting very much. The existing structure will have absolutely no changes to the outside. The only thing that's happening is two doorways are going to be closed off. That's it. There's already the kitchens that are there are going to stay there, bathrooms, bedrooms, nothing else is going to change. Did you say kitchens as in plural? There are two. Existing? They are already existing. And this is not just a house, it's a parsonage. Our client's going to testify that in fact it is used only, and it will be used only, in, on behalf. I'm sorry. Microphone. 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 Please. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm a courtroom lawyer. I have a tendency to speak on my feet. <laughs> it comes out. It comes out. You can That's take it out of the holder. Um, okay, so it's a parsonage. It's only used by the people who work for the church, the, the preachers that work for the church. It will continue to be used only for that purpose. It'll never be rented. It'll never be split off or sold. It'll always be part of the church property. It'll always be an integral part of what this church needs in order to function. And the only thing that's happening here, the only reason for the application is because there are two doors that allow passage from one side of the house to the other side of the house. And we want to close off those doors just so that it's a little bit more private, so that a pastor and an assistant pastor can have a little more separation for their families because these pastors have spouses and children as well. Can't you just keep them locked, those doors? <clears throat> no, we could noise is an issue and a little bit more permanency and of course if you've got a small children in the house the way you might with a pastor who's got a couple of kids a doorway is always a question as to whether it's going to stay closed so just to improve usability to reduce noise and to actually split it so that it can be used as two separate units the way it is now but with just that one change so it's not those doors. well any of your witnesses have any history on the building as to how long the kitchens have been there? Uh, my client would be able to testify. Okay, so we might maybe you want to swear him in and then we can. Sir, if you could ahead. raise your right hand. You swear a firm testimony you're about to give before the board that your soup, the truth shall help you, God? Yes, I do. Uh, and for the record, can you um, state and spell your name? Russell Dixon, R U S S E L Dixon, D I C K S E N. You're sworn just to speak up uh, into the microphone. Yes, my, my recollection from seeing the town records is in 1985, prior to Bethany Church purchasing the property, the addition was put on the single family house um, to add a kitchen where the garage was and then at two floors above that area. Um, which the home is very large, 11 bedrooms, so we're looking to divide that up. Lord, we don't have any records on any variances that were granted at the time this construction was done. 
not that I know of. I did not look. All bats are upstairs. Yes, there's bathrooms on each side. So there's a first and second floor. There's a first, a second on one side of the building. There's actually three floors. Okay. So where are you sealing off? Are you sealing off both floors? Both floors, uh, pretty much down the middle of the house. Yeah. Um, where the you know the the part of the building with the three floors. Um, it wasn't a smooth transition. Also, there was a a, um, a slight step down. So it just it just makes sense as far as where to divide it. So you're, you found a door on the first floor, a door on the second floor, getting rid of them, putting in a wall. Just put a permanent wall there. Yeah. yeah. And then she so said approximately uh, 1984, did you say, is when? Approximately 1985. 1985, okay. And when did the church acquire the property? <coughs> that, that church West purchased West. the property in approximately 2013. Okay. And um, if we were to grant the approval, um, would you be willing to um, have a deed restriction that if the property is ever sold, it would have to revert to one single family house with only one kitchen? Yes, that wouldn't be an issue. How do you think they got two kitchens? Well, the plumber and the carpenter put them in. So the, simple. The church didn't own the house when that was correct. Converted. We had nothing to do with that. When we purchased it, those the kitchen, mm -hmm. both kitchens were in place. You know, it really becomes moot if the board approves it the way mm -hmm. you've agreed. Well, I think it's a set of circumstances that it's not going to be a two-family house. No, it's, it's going to be two units for a religious yeah. environment. Because, because. This board, in, in the 34 years I've gone on, has never approved a two-family house, except where testimony was given that it was the predates zoning. I mean, I remember having a, an elderly uh, attorney from North Bedford Road, uh, Canning Geyser. Did you, you weren't on the board then when he... No, and he came and he had personal knowledge of this being, it was two unit houses on the one property, dating back to the 30s, yeah. I think. You were here, John, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I would like to structure a variance, uh, you know, the, the resolution that we're not granting a two, two family. We're, we're granting a modification to the parsonage. Where two we'll separate permit, families would be able to separate live dwelling there. units within. Hmm? Yeah. That will permit separate um, well, units, I guess. The best well, way could we put it. into the restriction? But he's already agreed to convert it back. If they but could we put in a do we need to put in a restriction that they have to be employees of the church? Well, they say it's not going to be it's not going to be a rental. Correct. So if we okay. we can put that in the resolution also. It's it not be rental property. Right. Church, church use. Hmm? Yeah. Church. Yeah, church use. Yeah. I hate to put a lot of restrictions in but like i said in 34 years we've turned down a lot of proposed two family houses and illegal two family houses that we wouldn't grant a variance to because like yours it was put in in the 80s zoning goes back to what 52 yeah 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 so um any variance they need a plan this it's basically an inherently beneficial use. Right. So the board has to determine whether there's any negative impact resulting from this. That's simple as that. But this the deed restriction takes it away. Yeah. But this says uh, to convert a single family dwelling to a two family dwelling. Do we need to change that? In the resolution. Well, the resolution no. Okay. Yeah. Present. Um, you, you don't have a planner for here tonight, do you? Uh, we do have yard. Yeah, we are, but you don't have a plan. Because you normally with a devariance, I mean, you know, having John next to me is is good enough for me. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's um, but just for the record, um, I think we should state that there is no planner here, and 
we're going based on the testimony of the of the pastor. Is the house currently being used for two families? Is the house currently being used for two families? Yes. And how long has that been? Um, approximately about a year or so. The, the person that was there, um, there's a single person, and then there's a family at one side, a single person on the other side. Okay. And they're church related people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Pastors or assistants. Yeah, we're not charging rent. Um, yeah, one is in the process of moving to Japan for ministry. So. How, how many members in that church? Then? The Parsippany location has about 90, about 90 people. Yeah. Any other questions by the board? Um, any members of the public have any questions of this witness and the testimony given this evening? I hear none seen none. You, you don't want to sum or anything it just uh, just very briefly the church obviously is an inherently beneficial structure this is used as part of that in fact my clients testified it's a very important part of that use uh, therefore we wouldn't be looking at the normal very rigorous restrictions on a use variance we'd be looking at the seca balancing test and in this case you're simply closing off a couple of doors you're making no changes to the use the number of automobiles the number of people nothing else is changing so for that we would ask any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to this application in support of this application? I have none seen none. The um, inherently beneficial use. Yes. Applicant has agreed to maintain it as a uh, part of the church and not commercial rentals or anything like that. I think the restrictions that you mentioned are perfect. Okay. Uh, someone frame a resolution? Application 23 colon 28, Bethany Church, 419 East Halsey Road. Block 742, lot 60, zone R-2, recommend granting a D variance to convert a single family dwelling to a two family dwelling uh, with the green for the deed restrictions for reverting back to one kitchen if it's sold and it not being a rental property. Jeff Hughes. Any discussion? Nora Second, Nora Nora Yes. Doskowitz? Yes. Kaplan? Yes. Azarella? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Ready? Yes. Right, yes. The result is the variance is granted. Uh, we will memorialize this at our next meeting, which will be the first week in it. September. I think. Yeah. 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 Free to proceed. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Good luck. God bless. Is that the fastest D variance you've ever had? Yes. Very close to it. The poor, the the poor architect wrote all his papers and everything. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, we like the no bringers. Yeah. <laughs> good night, good night now. Yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting for you. Can we adjourn the seven o'clock meeting? Cell phone. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Good night. Hmm? Walls. Yeah. Yeah. The announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. Um, Laura, you want to call the roll? Mr. Berkowitz. Here. Mr. Joskowitz. Here. Mr. Kaplan. Here. Mr. Mazzarella. Here. Mr. Parikh. Here. Mr. Reddy. Present. Mr. Chairman Hurricane. Present. Our board planner, Mr. Chadwick. Present. Our board engineer, Mr. Holloway, and our board attorney, Mr. King. Uh, we will dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance because we did that at the 7 o'clock meeting. Is there any member of the public that has any business to be brought to this board that is not on this evening's agenda? Not. I hear none. See none. Okay, so we are, uh, the next application is 2171 Puddingstone Developers, which is being, is, is was carried to this meeting for purposes of the next meeting. Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <coughs> Joseph O'Neill for Puddingstone. I believe September 27th was one of the dates being discussed. Mm -hmm. We would like to carry it to that day, grant all necessary extensions through the end of October, since September is so close to the end of September, so close to the 27th. That said, do we have a motion to carry putting stone application 2171 to September 27th, 2023 at Persephone High School. If you're here for that meeting, please listen to me. It's not going to be at the Hills this time. 
Persephone High School. For those who live on, in Puddingstone, if you don't know where Persephone High School is, it's on the corner of Baldwin and uh, yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, so moved. moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone Aye. opposed? Mm -hmm. Hmm? What does it mean? Sorry. 730. 730. 730. Thank you. Okay. Do we want to set the other date? Do we? Uh, no, do we'll we do it that night. She's got the date reserved. Okay. She reserved. got the thing, okay. and we have a we have a, a backup date reserved already. So, <clears throat> okay. Application twenty three fourteen Ryan Kelly eighty five Upper Rainbow Trail, C variance to le legalize a six foot high solid stockade fence. Sir, both you and your wife. Yes. Are you going to testify to both of you or just one? I just do. Okay. Could you raise your right hand? You swear firm testimony about to give it for the board's true self you got? Yes. And for the record, you're Ryan Kelly? Yes, sir. And you're the owner of 85 Upper Rainbow Trail, Block 116, Lot 5. Yes, sir. You're sworn. Have a seat. Please speak right. into the microphone, Mr. Chairman. The witness is sworn. Do you have any uh, pictures or anything of the. Um I do. I have some small pictures I printed out of what the fence structure currently looks like, and I'm asking the board if I could leave the fence as is. So we're um, going to mark those A1. Should I uh, bring them up? Yeah, bring them up. How many pictures? Seven. Seven. What is the history of this fence? You pulled it up and then somebody said it was not legal? Yes, so um, being a new to applying for a permit, I uh, didn't do the steps correctly. I don't know what happened. The fact, we uh, found a forever home last August in Rainbow Lakes. I was born and raised in Park City, you know, like Interville. Loved the town, loved the community, it was ecstatic. I could start my family forever home at this residence. I came into the property quickly. I put up a fence. I applied for the permit. And I guess I didn't do the correct steps with the permit, so therefore I didn't follow the correct rules and have three different violations. Um, the fence is on a corner lot, and that is why I'm here. It is over the six foot variance. Um, there are bushes and shrubs that are along the side that were always there prior to purchasing the property. It's kind of tucked in behind all that. Um, I was wanting to leave the fence as is because I don't see as too much of an obstruction to the view of the corner coming up to the stop sign. There's a large, um, maybe 75 feet to it or longer. I'm not a certain exact measure. There's some vegetation between the uh, roadway and that section of the fence that's in violation. Yes, that was there prior. Uh, which the Highwood Road shows those pictures. Yeah. And you're not going to take the vegetation out, right? No, I was planning on leaving it. Well, it softens the fence. Is your is your property on the corner, or is it? Yeah. Yes. So you've got two front yards. Yes. And how far back is the fence from uh, the right of way? It's not. I don't have the exact measurement. It's but not. It's not. It's it's. Looks like I'm guessing, Chaz. What do you think? It's ten feet or eight feet uh, from the pavement. Yeah. So it looks like for the based on the uh, survey, it's it's practically on the uh, property line. Right. So, so it, from the pavement, and you, I don't know if the pictures have gotten to you yet, but there's bushes and stuff along the road. Yeah, it could, it could be it could be five to ten feet for the right of way itself for the edge of pavement. Yeah. So did you say it's in the right of way? No, God. it's not. It's on his property, but it's right up close to his to the right of right away, right right away right. line. And then you can see on the survey, and it's hard to get. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's eight feet thereabouts. But the pictures showed shrubbery along that side of the fence. Yes, right? sir, sir. If um, we were to grant approval, um, we would most likely to see something in the resolution that the vegetation will remain or be improved or replaced, you know, so that the vegetation is always there. 
Because if it buffers the, the fence, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, and this is not a white stockade stock fence? It's not white? No, it's so a extra wood fence. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to scan those so bad. I'm just going to scan those so bad. No, no, no. No, six foot white fence looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like surrounding a prison. All right, uh, so he's about six feet somewhere, isn't he? In the back. The fence is six feet, but there's no numbers that I can figure out where the fence is to the edge of pavement. <coughs> okay. So the fence is on three sides. The only piece that's at the variance is that corner on Highwood Road. Highwood, yeah. and, and as you go back, you yeah. can set back the line. Okay. The rest of it's fine. Okay. Okay. Any other questions by the board? That's a guess. So technically, we're just granting a variance for the uh, one side port that's in the uh, front yard. Front yard setback. Right. Okay. The have, front yard is. Rain, up a rainbow trail? That's your front yard? No, Highwood. Highwood. There's technically two front yards in the corner lot. I have Highwood and Upper Rainbow Trail. What's your address? Your mailing address is up. Upper yeah. Rainbow is the mailing address. So that's really the front, uh, front of your house? Yes. yes that is the front. Uh, Highwood yeah. Road is, is a side street. Yes. But you're also front on that. Yes. <sighs> well, you know how much I'm enamored with six foot fences. Any other questions? No. Any questions by members of the public of this witness on the um, testimony given this evening? I'm hearing none to see none. I'm trying to get a read here as to. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to think when was the last time we allowed six foot fans, uh, solid six couple weeks ago. Front. Couple of weeks. A couple of weeks ago, same situation. It was there. And it had significant vegetation around it. Okay. Where was that? Where was that house? Anybody remember? Rainbow, Rainbow Lakes. Lakes. Yeah. Was it Rainbow Lakes? Yeah. It had no neighbors, right? It wasn't it on a cul-de-sac or something? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it was the, the. It was a real little lot too. Right? Yeah. It's isolated. Anything else you'd like to add? I haven't counted. I have to be sworn in if you want to talk. You can no, come and get sworn in if you want. I'm happy to hear you. You can, you can talk. You just have to be sworn in. Ma'am, you raise your right hand. You swore a firm testimony you're about to give it for the board that yourself you got. And for the record, can you state and spell your name? Georgia Stephos, G-E-O-R-G-I-A-S-T-E-M. I apologize. One more time. Georgia spelled like the state. Stephos, S is in Sam, T is in Tom, E, F is in Frank, O, S is in Sam. Um, I haven't counted, but given that Rainbow Lakes is a decently sized community, there's a house two down from us that has a six foot fence, and our fence installer was the one that encouraged us to go with that, so it would be more cohesive with the other fences in the community. I, he didn't tell you to get a permit. <laughs> we, did, well, we, applied for the, we applied for the permit, it was approved. He just didn't follow the steps correctly because we had never done it before. So yeah. we didn't, when he got the call that it was approved, we didn't know. Yeah, I, I just followed the steps incorrectly. Yeah, and you, and I, we could, tried. I could take you all over, all over Lake Hiawatha and point out all the illegal <laughs> six foot fences. Believe me, then, I know all of them because yeah. we never approved the variances for them. So um, <laughs> it, it, uh, let me just ask let me see, are any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to this application? in support of this application. I hear none and see none. Um, de minimis, it's, you know. I, I, I have one question, actually. The, the front part in this picture where there's no, no shrubbery or anything, is that a, do a gate open and closed, or is that there, solid? There is a gate on that side. Uh, it would be on the front facing side of the, of the home. And there's a gate to walk through the yard that way. OK. I'm just. Are we OK? Or, uh, what? Yeah? think so. I'm not sure about that side. Yeah, I think because you got some other vegetation. Yeah, I guess that's the only thing that's... Yeah, we'll, when we, we'll put in the, in the resolution that he has to maintain the vegetation and, the, and hopefully improve, improve it to make it less... Uh, well, we need to go into conference? David? I mean, look, I'm, I'm... Yeah, let's just do it. You want to do conference? Yeah. Okay. Motion to go into conference? Motion. Because you called me David. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Somebody want to start? It's back to the door. Oh, I'll start. Uh, Davis. Okay. Um, I, I'm not necessarily, because this one has the vegetation, I'm not necessarily opposed. It's not obtrusive. What I get concerned about is, is this our new standard? If we're going to start approving six foot with vegetation? Well, well, well it depends. Start approving the, wooden six foot with vegetation? Yeah, well, like, well, Dave, <laughs> unfortunately, um, the unfortunately they're here to ask for forgiveness I and opposition. Right. Okay? And I've already approached to the council that if we continue to get variance applications for people that have already done the work. There's going to be a penalty phase on on doing. On, if we grant them the variance, okay, there'll be a there'll be a, some sort of surcharge for not going the proper route. And I I mean whether we get it or not is another thing. But I think we need something like that because definitely we get application upon application upon application of the people that have done the work, and you know you you don't want to be the Miserable guy. Although, believe me, believe me, we've done it. We've done it where we had people remove parts of patio because they over, significantly over, over uh, uh, built what they were supposed to build. And and no, it's not going to be the. It's, I think it's going to be on a case. It has to be on a case by case. Understood. Yeah. It, it just so happens like we've had every case. Is well, now becoming how many how many six foot fences have we approved in the last ten years? Two in the last ten None, years none that weren't years. already up. Okay. But that gives a guideline to people. But it puts us in a tough position. Uh -huh. No one up here wants to be the person that says, right. sorry, you just wasted $5,000. Mm -hmm. Yep. So well, the we other had that one on Lakeshore Drive where we made the woman cut it down. Uh-huh. Yeah. Remember? She had yes. to cut it down to four feet. I remember. Because the okay. contractor told her it was okay, mm -hmm. and they couldn't find her. Any comments down here? No. Uh, I just feel the same way about it, like today's point. It's just, because you, you see, we've seen a lot of them lately with everything's been done, and mm -hmm. obviously I'm only a couple years on the board, but we've seen, I've seen a lot of it in my right. short time here, things being done, and I, if we can get council to get that fine, if well, however we got to go about it, we really need to push for that, because asking for forgiveness is, again, he had the right intentions, but we keep well, saying yes, we're never going to be able to say that's no. That's the other point. Is unfortunately you've got contractors running around oh, absolutely. that are are bypassing the permit process. It happened to me. Yeah. I had a paver patio put in, and I had to come back for it. <laughs> well, they stopped me mid work. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's my Bernie, feeling. Any, any questions? Any comments? No, I I, I kind of a, agree with everybody else's concern, but I hate to say uh, you know tear it down, uh, especially since this happens to. The fact is, number one, it's a corner lot. Number two, it's got the excess vegetation. Three, it's not hurting anybody. So it's not blocking, not blocking any vision or anything. Yeah, the only reason I'm considering is the vegetation. There's no neighbors. That's, right. no neighbors That's the only reason I'm considering. Mr. Ditto. Hmm? Ditto. Same okay. thing. Uh, Especially engineering report says mm -hmm. that there is no impact on that. I would give it a. I, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a reluctant yes. No, me too. Okay, uh, motion to come out of conference? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Um, someone want to frame a resolution of um, granting the variance? Application 23 colon 14 Ryan Kelly, 85 Upper Rainbow Trail, Block 116, Lot 5, Zone R3, recommend granting a C variance to legalize a six foot high. Solid stockade fence, contrary to section 430-11 A and B, with the stipulation that the vegetation will not be removed and will only be improved upon. Seconded. Any discussion or call the roll? Berkowitz. Yes. Joskowitz. Yes. Kaplan. Yes. Mozzarella. Yes. Tariq. Yes. Reddy. Yes. Hurricane. Yes. The ranch is granted. Word of advice, if you're going to do anything else, Go to the zoning office. Don't go to the building department. Go to the zoning office first and see what the parameters. And you can get a copy of the information. Um, there's a piece of paper. You know what what uh, our zone you live in. You can get a 
a piece of paper. And we'll give you all the setbacks and lock coverages. So if you want to put something up and you're and you're already at 20% of lock coverage or whatever it is, you'll know. Okay? Thank you very much. All right. Good luck. Um, yeah, I promise positive, but um, in I, I was trying to go online and read all the fine print on First Affinity's website, and I think um, just a piece of feedback, the thing about two cut yards is really challenging to find, honestly. I had to like really, really navigate, and I think like, I don't know if variance is, that you're, it sounds like you're seeing more, I don't know if it's from people that have two side yards, but if that's a thing, then maybe the verbiage on the website or the control app, I couldn't find it. I, I so it's around. in the back. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, application uh, 2326, Mora Mick, 6 Apsekin Road. D variance to operate an art school within a residential property. You may proceed whenever you're ready. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, board professionals, Frederick Zelli, Post Pollock, on behalf of the applicant. This is regarding uh, the application of Mara Danielle Mick, doing business as Lakeside Art Studio, 46 Abseekin Road, Block 366, Lot 2, which is located in your R4 zone. Uh, this is also a mea culpa application, albeit 14 years uh, into the operation. Uh, we do not know exactly the uh, genesis of it, but uh, some time ago, um, Ms. Mick was served with a notice of violation because her uh, painting school, her art painting school, uh, was being operated and uh, is not a permitted use in the zone. Uh, so we are here this evening seeking a D1 use variance to enable her to continue uh, with her school. I have two witnesses this evening, Ms. Mick herself and Kendra Lealy of Kyle McManus, who's our professional planner. Uh, we have everything should be in order paperwork-wise. The affidavit of service was provided correct by our office. Thank you. Um, we have no exhibits. Uh, the photographs that we may rely upon in testimony are already part of your file. And if there's nothing further, I would ask that Ms. Mick be sworn in. Ma'am, if you could raise your right hand. You swear a firm testimony about the before the board is the truth to help you God? Yes. And for the record, you're uh, Maura Mick? Yes. And you are the applicant um, for 6 of Seekin Road? Yes. Right. Uh, you're sworn. If you can just sit down and speak into the uh, microphone. Mr. Chairman, the witness is sworn. Ms. Mick, just for the record, you go by Danielle, typically. Yes. Is that? Okay. yes. Uh, and just for the record again, where do you reside? 6 of Seekin Road, Parsippany. And how long have you lived there? 21 years. As I stated to the board a moment ago, we're here seeking a use variance uh, in order to allow you to continue to operate your painting business from your home. Is that your understanding? Yes. Uh, can you describe the business a little bit? What exactly do you do? I'm an art educator and artist, and I teach classes to students from the age of 8 until 90. You have um, to speak up a little bit, Kim. Okay. I'm an art educator and artist, and I teach students from the age of 8 to 90. Um, I've been teaching classes uh, for 14 years, and I have a very small private school. There's no signage. I do have a website. And at the peak of my business, I was teaching 16 classes a week, never had a complaint. And since the pandemic, I'm down to four classes a week, which is two daytime, three classes on Saturday for kids, and one class on Friday for adults. When you say kids, what ages are we talking about? Eight to 18. And how long do your classes last? The kids' classes are an hour each, and the adults are two hours. Uh, and how many, let's start with the youth classes, how many students do you have in a typical youth class? Eight. Is it ever more than eight? No. Uh, what about your adult classes, how many adults? Four. When you have your youth classes, let's focus on that, is there any parking requirement or are they typically dropped off and picked up by it's the parents? It's all drop off. The parents don't come into the studio. 
And what about your adult classes? How do they handle parking? I assume they have vehicles. Yeah, they park on my property. I put in a parking apron on the front uh, several years ago where three cars are. And when I started the school, I put um, pavers down the side of my property, which holds three to four cars. I'm going to show you two photographs that have been submitted to the board already. Um, your package will be the fifth and sixth. And, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to be the third board. Uh, I'll, we'll hold this up for the board to see while we're looking at. Now, this, is that the apron that you're referring to? Yes. If the cars are parked diagonally and they're not big trucks, you can get three. So typically, these two vehicles are parked Here's essentially the, parallel. Right. You have a photograph. Here's a picture of the three diagonal. And when you have your adult classes, is that how your students typically park on the diagonal? Yes. And, and they are off the road? Correct. And then this, yeah, these are the papers that are put in down the side of the cars where you can get three to four cars. Did you need and did you receive a permit for that parking apron? On the front? Mm -hmm. No. No, you did not receive one? No. There had always been parking there when I bought the house. It had pea pebbles. And then I decided to get rid of the pea pebbles because it was really hard to shovel. Um, how, how long ago was that about? Five years. So that that is that was your yard that you paved over? Yes. Yeah. You did indicate just now that when you purchased the property, it was already designated with pea gravel, it wasn't grass. Is that Correct. Right? Could, uh, Council, if I can, ha how much of that uh, was gravel? Was it, Is was it possibly it the, the same, same dimensions? The same space. So you just paved where there's gravel before? Yes. So it's one structure? The home and the studio is one structure? Yes. If you look at this picture of the, my house, yeah. the first floor is all open studio space and there's a kitchen and a small powder room and at some point they added on the back like a lot of these homes at the lake and there's like storage space so you store all your is it paint or Art is it supplies paint yeah. painting drawing pastels all there yes have you had problems in the past ever with neighbors that have complained that you're operating a business in a residential area? No, and a couple are here tonight. I assume we're gonna hear from them. Okay. <laughs> and a couple are on vacation. Mm. But you've never had anyone complain, is that accurate? About the school? No. Can, can we follow, Mr. Zelli said you received a notice from the township that you were in violation. Correct. Did you ever contact the township as to how, how that came about? Mm. Yes, and they wouldn't tell me. Okay. Anonymous. But now I know. Been made. Pardon? A complaint had been made. Right, but no one told me who the complaint team was. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. No. The, I think you asked that. Uh, there's another question I was going to ask, but I think you've answered it. The first floor is the studio space plus a kitchen. On the first floor, yes. On the second floor is your living space. Correct. You been there by yourself or you have a Yes, family? by myself. Do you have another kitchen in the second floor or no? No. Just the first floor. Okay. Ms. Mick, there's two more photographs to your right that have also been submitted to the board. What did the actually more than two? What did those depict? You just hold them up to the board. Okay, seat. this shows the layout space during the pandemic where I had to space the students um, in the first floor area. It's open space, they have individual tables. And they're happy campers. So how do you know that you're in compliance for bathrooms, uh, safety issues? How do we know you're even in compliance for anything like that? Well, why don't we approach it this way? What does, uh, do you have a bathroom available for your students if they need one? Yeah, it's right there on the first floor. On the first floor. Right, right off the studio. Um, right over here. So there is facilities. 
and there is uh, obviously the front door. Is there any other door, uh, egress, ingress, or egress door to that area? Yeah, if you go through here, there's a storage space, and there's a back door that goes into that space. So you have two exterior ingress and egress doors. For the first floor. And is your building fit with smoke detectors and carbon monoxide? Yes. Are you, as the owner of a school, are you subject to inspection by any government entity such as the Board of Health, uh, Department of Education, fire? Do, do you have to be regulated at all, or can you just do whatever you want and call it an art school? Um, as far as I know, because it's a small private single proprietor I don't have to follow any of those guidelines as far as you know as far as I know you've never you been cited by anybody license? for any violation of anything along those lines no. no does your business need any license a license you're operating a school um I've been teaching 40 years mm. So my credentials, I had assumed, would speak for myself. Not necessarily, no, I would no. imagine. That's a question. Well, I think it's, it's, I think it's the same question that it was just asked. She said she's not aware of any requirements that she needs to follow in that regard. She's not been cited by anyone for any kind of violation. Let's go back to the size of the classes. The 8 to 18 are 4. Or is that the adults? That's the adults. The mm -hmm. 8 to 18 are the, um, are 8 students in a class. 8 students. And there are 2 classes of that size? 3. 3. And the adult classes are 4, and there is how many classes? 1. Them? 1. And the 8 to 18 group comes in during the week or they Saturdays they're only Saturday only Saturdays and the adults are other times Fridays right so it's only Friday and Saturday then yes open? is so, that because of the slowdown were you yeah so you actually were operating more days when yes. business was good yes well, I think is that's that your goal I think that's going to become up. an issue. No, that's not my goal anymore because I am getting older. Yeah, I think that's going to become an issue. I think if the boards want to seriously consider this, they're going to have to set limits on class size and how many times it operates. Well, I went from 16 classes a week with no complaints to down to four. But that's not necessarily the only guideline we're going with. There are you know, rules and regulations. Uh, to me, you're, you are operating, just to, in the beginning of the case of what we're hearing, you are operating a business in what seems to be a residential area. So that's a problem. Usually it's a, it's a big problem for me. I think that's one of the things that I don't usually agree with. You ha have the best intentions. You might be doing everything in theory right for you and for your students, but that doesn't necessarily make it correct from the law side or from some of your neighbor, you know, from the neighbors, they might, you know, it's an issue. So the other piece that's a, a little concerning to me is that we're, we're looking to approve a business. It does not appear that you've officially reported this business to any organization or permitting body. So when you say you're not aware of whatever regulations you need to be aware of to run a school, and I'm using the word school because that's what you called it. How would anybody know it's even in existence to inspect it? So right. if we're going to be doing this, right. should it be sprinkled? You have paint and stuff like that, and it's a school. Should there be a sprinkler? Right. I don't know the answer to that. I do. Probably yes. Oh, because you're a teacher. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, just a little concerned that you know <laughs> you're asking us to approve something that has had zero in uh, formal inspections. Mm -hmm in the history of its existence. How do you have, um, it presents do you have a name for, you have a name for yourself? Lakeside Art Studio. Okay, and do you advertise anywhere? On the internet. 
Okay, and that's where your students come from, from the internet? Anybody have any of your... Word of mouth, yeah. Have any of your students ever been around your neighbors? Have they been what? Have any of your students come from your neighbors? Yes. Laura, was the fire any idea how many? Uh, did they have any reports? Fire I don't department? know, maybe no. eight or nine. Right. One did is they, here uh, tonight. They still exist? <laughs> they moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> now and then. And found out I was teaching art classes, and she registered, and she lives across the street. She say how she found out? I believe she saw the students coming and going and was sure. asking me. Okay. I don't have a sign. So I appreciate the uh, concerns the board's expressing. We're kind of being in a position to prove the negative here to prove that we don't have to report to somebody uh, without any indication of the somebody who the somebody would be. Uh, the township has obviously been on notice of this for quite some time now. Uh, since they were pushing us to get this application filed, and it uh, conceitedly took us a little longer than we had intended. Uh, other than the operation of a business in a residential zone, nothing else has been raised by the township at all. Hey, but but I, I, I hate to interrupt, but sometimes, unfortunately, either through miscommunications or whatever, it seems as we've had some issues with getting engineering reports and or them getting back to us, and the same with fire, that we've had a couple of cases recently that the f the fire haven't commented we can't just accept that silence means that they're agreeing with anything it's an issue well, I, I advise clients and represent to boards frequently that we will not object to and we will consent to any law that we're required to follow in the first place uh, i would have no objection to a condition uh, that she has to comply with any applicable licensing requirements any applicable safety requirements and to the extent that she would be unable to do so, then we would have to appeal to whatever the appropriate body would be to seek uh, deviation from that. I think that would address the board's concerns to have that kind of a condition in place. I think I would have to hear from the fire before I would be able to vote on anything. Was this application ever sent to the fire department? No, it, because it wasn't used. Uh, I would think construction would be the place, mm -hmm. you know, to, well, to deal with the requirements or a class and. So we, we grant her a variance. She's got commercial property there, right? Yeah, that piece of the school. school. That, yeah, that well, and I don't know her personal tax situation. Is she, is she you know, declaring that part of her house as business property? But regardless of that, do, does it go on to the town rules so that the fire inspector knows to go inspect there because it is now a commercial piece of property? If it goes through the construction department, the uh, fire subcode, uh, would look at that aspect you know, it be needing to be sprinkled but, and, not, but, not they would, they a, but it's not going to go to the building department because she's done no construction she hasn't but if she has to sprinkle her or sprinkle well, you have in there yeah I don't I don't I don't know mr. If chairman if I may there, there's kind of another aspect to this which our planner will address uh, but the only reason that we require a variance uh, in the first place is because your definition of a uh, your conditional use definition of a home occupation includes a school such as this, but only if it's one student at a time. Uh, like so piano teachers and people like that. Along those lines, right. Uh, so the only reason we're here, at least for mm -hmm. a D1 as opposed to a D3 possibly, uh, is because we have more than one student at a time. So it would seem that situations where it's only one student, these issues would not be coming up. And I don't know if the fact that you have more than one student really changes that uh, on a theoretical basis. I think the board would disagree that eight kids versus one is a significant difference. It does trigger something. Yeah, of course. As I said, I understand the, the board's concerns. What I've offered, I think, is the best way to handle it. Uh, you're, you're not giving up anything from a safety perspective or a licensure perspective as long as you've covered it in your resolution. Why, why don't you suggest the board carry this matter and submit to the fire department, fire marshal, with an inventory of what you have in the storage room and find out what it is? Because otherwise, you're asking to go on faith and hope, and I don't think you're going to go that way. I understand and appreciate the suggestion. Might I request, since we have our planner here this evening, and obviously she's paid, that she'd be able to testify? I think we can go ahead and hear the planner. Yeah, let's, okay. let's do that. I don't have to bring him back. 
Thank you. I appreciate her back. Uh, I have no further questions from Ms. Mick at this point. I have no further questions from Ms. Mick. Any members of the public have any questions of this witness on testimony given this evening? Questions? Do anybody have any questions? No. Next witness. Oh. Thank you. Oh. oh. You have a question, Joe? I'd like to make a statement. Oh, I'm, I'm no, no, no you can't make statements at this point. Only questions. We'll have there'll be time for statements. Uh, do you issue degrees? No. Thank you. What was that? Issue, issue degrees. Degreed. There's no degrees. It's not as It's technically not legal. Next, next, uh, want to bring up your next? Uh, no. Yeah, we call Kendra Leely, our professional planner. Ma'am, if you could uh, raise your right hand. Can you swear from the testimony back to the board of true self you got? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name? Kendra Leely, K E N D R A L E L I E. And you are a uh, professional planner? I am. All your licenses are in full force and effect? They are. And you testified either before this board or other boards in the state of New Not Jersey? Not before this board, but many others, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the witness is sworn in qualified. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Lilly, what is your professional affiliation? Um, I am a professional planner in the state of New Jersey. I have a, a certification from the American Institute of Certified Planners, which is a national certification. I'm also a licensed landscape architect. I work for the firm of Kyle McManus. I'm a consulting planner, and I have been doing um, this type of work for almost 30 years, um, mostly as a board planner, but I do do some uh, private work, and I'm here to provide testimony as it relates to the use variants. And you've been tasked with uh, preparing planning analysis and testimony for this evening with regard to this application. I have. Uh, would you please give us the benefit of what you've discovered? Absolutely. Um, so as part of my review of the application, obviously I looked at the application, I looked at your professional's reports, I've looked at your master plan, your zoning ordinance, I've done a site visit um, at the, um, the property um, and um, certainly talked to the client and, and, uh, and the attorney with regards to um, the merits of the application and the, and the details, which you just heard a little bit about. The property, as was indicated, is uh, 6 Epsecon Road within the township. Um, the lot itself, and I don't think it was described yet, is 10,000 square feet in the R4 zone. It contains a two-story single-family detached home has a deck and some, a shed and some grass paver driveway, which was described. Um, the lots in a, in, a small, uh, in a small neighborhood of single family homes um, and certainly close to the lake within 150 feet of, uh, of the lake. The applicant seeking a D1 use variance, which we just discussed, the reason why is because a, um, and, I, and I, while it's maybe been categorized as a school, I would say it's instruction. Um, it's tutoring for folks that want to understand how um, to better um, uh, provide art. Uh, it's not necessarily a registered school. It is art instruction. Um, so that is what we are asking for. Art instruction of more than one person uh, is not permitted in, in this R4 zone. Uh, what, as was indicated, we're talking about four classes a week, uh, one on a Friday and three on Saturday. Uh, the, the classes take place in a room, which you all just took a look at. And there are parking spaces for six vehicles, as was indicated, three in the pull-off and then uh, three to four in the uh, paved area uh, on the side of the property. Um, there are no site improvements that are being proposed with this particular application. The R4 district, and just so you all are, are aware, the R4 district uh, uh, permits several uses, public community center, public auditorium, public library, museum, art gallery, public park, public play playground. It also uh, allows for public assembly uh, for not-for-profit organizations. As was indicated by our attorney, uh, conditional use also includes uh, a home occupation, and that home occupation is defined as uh, instruction for one person. It allows for a uh, school and a child care facility as a conditional use, a place of worship, and as I indicated, assembly uses. So, and, and you all are very familiar with the, the required testimony for D1 variance. The D1 variance, uh, we must prove to you that we satisfy the positive <clears throat> and the negative criteria. 
um, the positive criteria is essentially a special reason. What What is the special reason that you would grant this particular variance for allowing for a use that isn't otherwise permitted in this zoning district? Um, and, and typically the special reasons that are given and the one that you always probably hear is that it promotes the general welfare. That is a municipal land use law um, goal and objective or, or, or goal. And in other words, the, it, the use or the development, and I'm going to say in this particular instance, the use, because we're not talking about development, is found to promote the general welfare. Um, when you find that it does meet the general welfare, you can find that a special reason is provided. So how do we do that in this situation? How do we define how we're, we're meeting general welfare? Well, our courts have held that the applicant must, must demonstrate that the subject property is particularly suitable for the proposed use. So why is this property that we're talking about at 6 app Seekin suitable for the instruction of four to eight people uh, on the property? Um, it does not look at, we don't, you don't have to look at, and we don't have to prove to you that there's no other potential location for this type of use, but that we're looking specifically at the property and why does this property, what's peculiar about it that would um, accommodate this use adequately? So we look at the property. Um, first, and, and this is somewhat evident, it's been operating for 14 years with, with no complaints until recently. Um, 14 years uh, without having parking issues or traffic issues or traffic accidents, noise issues, light issues, um, concerns with fire safety issues. So, so there's been a track record and that's unusual. Uh, when we come to you for a use variance, you typically don't have that operation already occurring. But we do have evidence and we have empirical data that, that we can say to you that the site already accommodates this without any potential issues. And we'll talk about um, the negative criteria in a second, but, but really it's operating as is and the, the site adequately accommodates the, the use as we talk about today. In fact, it's so on a larger scale according to Ms. Mick's testimony until, in, until recently. COVID. That's true. Um, I think the other thing that's very interesting about this parcel as it relates to the R4 district is it's an oversized lot. It's 10,000 square foot lot, 6,000 square feet is, is uh, required. So it's about 60% larger than the lots that are, are permitted within this, uh, within this district. Why does that matter? Why does an oversized lot matter? Well, for several reasons. One is that it allows for more space, more parking, more outdoor activity, greater setbacks, more green space. So as you add more people to a site, it, can, it accommodates that, that, uh, those people, meaning it accommodates the parking. There is parking available. It accommodates any act outdoor activity without necessarily nuisance impacts onto the surrounding neighbors. Um, all of these factors, and, and I guess m one of the things I wanted to make sure that you are aware of, with that oversized lot, that oversized lot also allows for more frontage, which allows for more parking, as well as area for drop off and pickup. So your ordinance requires a 60 foot frontage or 60 foot building width. This has 100 feet of building, uh, sorry, of lot width uh, along Absecan Road. Um, again, ab about 40 more feet that allows for parking and drop off. Um, so I, I think those are all reasons why um, this lot can certainly be indicated as such that it is particularly suitable for the for the existing use and, and what we're asking for approval for. I think the other very interesting part about this lot is, as I mentioned, it's very close to the lake. Um, this is art instruction, and so inspiration for art is always very important. Having uh, a lot that has a view of, of this amazing um, uh, aesthetic that, um, that, you, that you are able to see as a student, um, I think makes it very particularly uh, interesting and suitable for what specifically we're talking about tonight and that's art instruction. Um, so that's really when, when we talk about meeting the, the general welfare, um, I would submit to you that this lot is particularly well suited for the art instruction. There are two other reasons in, uh, in municipal land use law. It, when we provide special reasons, we only have to look at one purpose of zoning. Um, I'm going to submit to you that there are two other uh, purposes of zoning that, that are enhanced um, or at least met by this, uh, by this application. Um, this is purpose G in municipal land use law, and it's to provide sufficient space in appropriate locations for a variety of uses, and that could be residential, agricultural, commercial, 
open space, public and private, and it's to meet the new needs of all New Jersey citizens. So not just the community, but all New Jersey citizens. We're gonna concentrate obviously on, on her students and, and um, the, the, the community that she's serving currently. But this is a private commercial entity as was indicated. Uh, it's providing a cultural need of art education. And given her success over the past 14 years, uh, not discounting what's happened in the last couple with the pandemic, it's clear that the community is supporting the need of this art education um, or art instruction, I, I would say, in a better way. So that, that meets purpose G. And then the other purpose is uh, purpose M, and that's to encourage coordination of various public and private procedures and activities shaping land development with the view of lessening the cost of such development and to be and, and really this is the key, to have more efficient use of land. Um, this basically means we're looking at using existing infrastructure, existing buildings for the location of an art studio as well as those classes in a residential home. That's an example of the use of efficient land. Why is that? There's no need to build. There's no need to build elsewhere um, as this is adequate space as I already testified to. Uh, that this this home uh, exists and is particularly suitable for the the use of it as uh, use of it for lessons, and it, it actually lessens the cost of development not only to the business owner she doesn't have to go and lease a space and open up somewhere else um, and 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 uh, have the costs that are associated with that but there's less of an impact to the community itself where you don't see additional development site development for a use like that so. Um, in my opinion, I would submit to all of you that the positive criteria is certainly met. The general welfare, this is a, 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 um, a uh, lot that is particularly suitable for the use. The second prong or the second item is the negative criteria. And as all you know and have heard probably many, many times is that, um, that the two prongs of negative, negative criteria include that there's no substantial detriment to the public good, meaning the surrounding neighborhood, and there's no impairment of your zone plan. So I'm gonna start with the negative criteria as it relates to the surrounding neighborhood because I know that those are concerns from uh, the board members. Um, so first, no substantial detriment to the surrounding neighborhood as I kind of uh, uh, hinted to is that we're talking about four classes a week. Um, so uh, you know, little traffic coming through this, this, uh, this uh, property as well as the street. Um, at most, we have eight kids getting dropped off and picked up. There's been no issues with traffic um, as far as safety is concerned. I almost equate this to um, having a single family home and having a bunch of kids over to, to play on a Saturday morning um, where you're dropping off and it could be a birthday party or it could just be getting together as, as a bunch of kids and whether they get dropped off, ride a bike or walk. Um, that's essentially what you're dealing with as it relates to intensity of the type of use that's happening here. Most of the time, these kids and, and adults are inside a building, so you're not necessarily going to hear them. So no, no noise that would go outside the realm of what you would normally hear in a residential neighborhood. No additional light. These are during the day, so we're not having additional light intrusion on, onto other properties. No dust. No, no offensive smells, uh, as was indicated, uh, most of the op operations are within the building. Uh, no uh, waste that would be beyond what you would normally see for residential property, no signage. Um, and then I think as it relates to the safety issue that's already been brought up, the mitigation of that is complying or, or stipulating to the fact that we would get a business license if necessary. We would get uh, fire review and fire safety um, to come in uh, and, and make sure that we are on the up and up with whatever uh, fire, fire safety code uh, items that we, that we would need to provide. So as it relates to your negative criteria and substantial detriment to uh, the surrounding properties, I would submit to you that there is not a substantial detriment and that if there is a concern, meaning that if there is a, a, a detriment or a nuisance that you potentially see, I think we can indicate that we've mitigated that in, in a way that you can, cannot find that it's a substantial detriment. Finally, uh, as it relates to the uh, no substantial impairment of your uh, purpose of your zone plan and ordinance, basically that, that really just looks at your master plan. What does your master plan say about having businesses in a residential district? What, what, what is there some guidance that you all can, can take a look at? And there are several um, uh, key uh, goals and, and strategies that the, I think that we can point to to say we are 
not impairing your zone plan. We are not impairing your master plan. We're actually we're actually um, following it. We we are in compliance with it, and we're actually I think and and you'll hear me in a second talk about it. But I think we're actually doing exactly what it's asking um, some of the residents uh, to do in this particular case. So. There are several goals, and if, if you just just uh, humor me for a second, I'm going to read them. There's still only three, so I'm not going to I'm not going to take too much of your time. The first is to preserve and protect the character, the density, and the aesthetics of the township's established and stable residential neighborhood by restricting incompatible uses, uh, which basically means limiting non-residential development. Well, then you're saying, well, Kendra, why are we? You know, you just said something completely opposite. Well. It's to protect the prevailing residential development patterns while ensuring residents can enhance their properties and adapt to modern preferences. That, what I'm su suggesting is that the art classes, while they are non-residential, do not change the character of this, of this neighborhood. They, they um, do not change the aesthetics of this residential neighborhood. There is really no difference um, whether she's holding uh, art classes right now or not holding art classes as it relates to what this residential district looks like and feels like. Um, so I believe that we meet that particular master plan goal. A second is to preserve and enhance the township's retail, commercial, corporate, research, and professional office areas by implementing land use strategies that respond to the modern market and real estate trends. It also suggests that you consider creative alternatives as appropriate, including reusing and repurposing the existing building stock in the overall context of the township land use uh, plan uh, goals sorry planning goals the use of this space as i had have indicated within the existing residence uh, for commercial activity furthers this goal we are using existing building stock and we do not need to provide a, uh, find another site for for this this very uh, minimal type of use meaning not not so many people coming to the uh, the property and I think this last one is a key one, and we, we hit it on the head. And this is to nurture the township's diverse cultures to establish a unique community identity that supports and strengthens the historical, the arts, and the cultural resources. The art programs support this goal for sure, and it's a resource that strengthens a focus on arts as a valued amenity that supports the community identity. There are very specific strategies that your master plan puts forth as to how you meet this goal. First, it's, it, it indicates that it's recognized that there is a community benefit when the community comes together in promoting art. And, and the second part of that strategy is, to, is specifically to cultivate the artist community, support and nurture existing organizations that promote the development of the township's artist community. This couldn't be any more on point um, as, as this particular application relates to that, that uh, strategy. Uh, Ms. Nick is providing this, this very strategy already within her home. In addition, the strategy states that the township sh should support allowing land uses, this is important, the strategy states that the township should support allowing land uses that serve the artist community, such as a live work artist loft and gallery. There are specific objectives in your master plan that support exactly what Ms. Mick is currently doing. Um, so I, I would submit to you that we meet the positive and the negative criteria. The existing residence is well suited for the use, and we submit that we've successfully met the positive and negative criteria by indicating that there is no impact to the surrounding community, um, nor any impairment of your zone plan. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Ms. Lily, let me ask you a question. Uh, in light of the well-publicized decrease in funds uh, in public schools for arts of various types, this kind, musical arts and so forth, not only in our county and in our state, but nationwide, from a planning perspective, uh, do you believe that this alternative uh, to those programs that are uh, in dire straits these days uh, helps satisfy those goals that you've spoken about? Absolutely. Thank you. Nothing further? Uh, do you know the hours of operation? How, how long is the class? Um, I think Ms. Mick indicated that the um, kids' classes are an hour and the adult classes are two hours. The, you, you referred to the parking and, and traffic. You referred to little traffic. How do you define that? I think something that's not out of the ordinary of what you would normally uh, see in a residential community. So if I'm understanding this correctly and calculating this correctly, you have on Saturday, three classes of eight children each for one hour. Correct. Parents do not stay. 
Correct. So that's roughly two trips generated per kid. I'm just going to assume for argument's sakes, eight kids, there are no siblings, eight different cars. That's 16 trips times three on Saturdays. How many houses are on that street? It's a relatively short street, right? Yeah, there's probably dozen, half a, eight to a dozen, okay. I would say. Handful, short, short, dead end street. So 16 times three, 40. 40 trips, yeah. Yeah, 48. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, 48 trips on a little street in a three hour period. You consider that little? I know you're not a traffic expert. I, I am not. So you're going to put me in a position where I, I'm not going to necessarily indicate Understood. that. I, but I, I, but think, I think you know where I'm going with I that. I do. I also, I also think you have to look at the community too. This is, this is not um, certainly on a, on a highway. So mm-hmm. the ability to walk and bike to the, the, and I don't know what the, the percentages are, and we probably can get them for you, um, is probably much higher than if it was on a, a larger arterial Agreed. road. Yep. So, so I think to some extent, um, you know, the, that would be worst case scenario uh, of those those number of trips. Which is I, what we would want. You would to want to look at. Yep. I, 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 again, we're going to go on the benefit of the fact that we have an existing use that we can look at. So we don't have to pontificate about what potentially could happen. We know what that's happening currently. And um, that traffic has not created an issue. I, I, from my understanding, and I, and I didn't do any research on this, so maybe it's something, um, but from my, what I know and my conversation with the applicant, with Ms. Mick, is that there hasn't been any traffic accidents or issues as it relates to safety. Mm-hmm. Neither now or in the past when it was far greater volume than we deal with. So your worst case scenario back then was a lot more trips than it is now. Understood. Than it and I'm, I'm probably should ask this of Miss Mick, but do you have a sense of how, you know, she was at a much higher number of classes? She's looking to reduce. Is she looking? Do you know if there's a? Is this the cap? The four and the. I the believe three that was and the her one? testimony. I have no objection to bringing her back to answer that question. That was her testimony. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I think we've said we've stipulate stipulate to the fact that we would um, have that as a condition that it would not increase. Any other questions by the board? Any members of the public have any questions of this witness on the testimony given this evening? Questions? Uh, I hear none, see none. I have no further witnesses. Yeah, I, uh, John brought up the point about. I mean, there's there's obviously going to be materials that are going to be flammable as part of the instruction. And I think it's everybody's benefit to find out what the fire marshal would say, if anything. As we to we don't have an objection to that. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's a mechanism. I don't, I don't think you can get this can down the road. I think you need to know what he's going to say for this board to act. Yeah. Or what, what things are going to have to be done to make it valuable to us if, if something if he comes up with something I think it's a fair comment to see if the fire official has any comments it's a fair request of us to investigate to the best we can whether there are any licensure issues that are triggered here um, and that's certainly something that we can look into uh, as a practical matter I would uh, the, the board has a does not have a mercantile type of license it's, it doesn't it's not like South Jersey so she would, if she's approved, she'll get a different assessment class. Uh, she'll have a commercial assessment, and residential assessment. But I, we're way off. That has nothing to do with. It's, yeah, it's, it's beyond the purview of this board. I think and we need I, to know. I just can't even comment on it as far as what I think the taxation we need to, know, would be. need to know that fire is not an issue, or if it is, it can be corrected. So are we in agreement that we'll carry this case until we have a chance to have the fire inspector review the property? Uh, I don't have any objection to that. Um, uh, we would bring Ms. Mick back if it determines that there are any, any further witnesses, uh, as long as we have the opportunity to present those. I don't know that that would be the case. But. I don't think you're going to need to bring back your planner. No, I don't. I think she, she was very, very, very complete presentation. 
No, not until they finished the testimony. Right. Um, Nora, when can we carry this case to? December 6th. When? December 6th. Like in December? Like in December. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you think this can be done and finished up in half an hour, you could do a special October 18th, but I have nothing for it. You're not going to have me, any more witnesses, so no. what we're going to do is have the fire report. Oh, let me throw a point you ask how many people out there want to testify. That's a very good point, Barney. That's why I keep you up here. Because you're <laughs> <laughs> now, if we carry this case to a special meeting, on October 16th. It will be a 30 minute meeting, which means we have to accomplish all that we're supposed to do in 30 minutes. My question, and it appears that there's a number of members of the public here for this application. If you plan on speaking either in a favor of or um, not in favor of, then that's going to extend our time. So I'm just trying to get a feel. There's one gentleman over here that wants to speak. Is there anybody else? that's going to need to speak about this application? Two, three, four. I guess we're going to go to okay. How many are here for the application in general? I think all these people are here for that. Are all these people? Yeah, they're all here. No? Can you ask how many are No, but all you people are here because of this application. There's like 20 or more than 20 of them. Can you ask how many are against or no? I don't want to know that. Okay. Well, I don't think we're no, going to be able to do it in 30 time. minutes. That's for sure. Well, there's only a few want to speak. Huh? I, there was six hands raised to speak. Oh. Yeah. Right. Um, December 6th. Okay. As long as your zoning officer is okay with it, we're okay with it. Yeah, you give us an extension through the end of the year? Absolutely. Motion to carry this case to December 6th without further notice and with whatever extensions are required through December 31st. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're here for this case, it's going to be carried to December 6th at 7.30 p.m. And that meeting is here at this location? Right here, yep. Unless you, unless you come back with 250 people, then I got a problem. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. We'll have the fire inspector here then. Hmm? <laughs> we'll have the fire inspector here then. Hopefully. <laughs> no, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah founding. <laughs> very, very, me, very nice present. Very nice present. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the great of the you have to check them outside. It's December 6th. Well, yes. December 6th. December 6th. So this was the year you went to the Yes. Yes. I never have more than one client here. I never have it here. I see maybe 12, 14 people in Two for one? I don't no, publish it in Greenbrier because I don't have somebody. You got 20. <laughs> they don't feel like driving all the way up to the Yeah. But that's location. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. O'Neill. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Joseph O'Neill here on behalf of the applicants for the next two applications. Which are both Dunkin' Donuts located. Which one are we doing Please first? Speak up, Jeff. So I believe uh, 2308 is the North Beverwood Road right, okay. uh, proposal. We should probably do that one. Okay. 
And so with that, I'd like to call Mr. Lino Santos, who is the principal operator of the proposed number of Please remind me to write. Sir, raise your right hand. You saw a firm testimony about to give it for the board's true self you got. And you're the owner of the um, subject property. The, are you the owner of the subject properties or you're just going to rent them? Just the business. Okay, so you have um, authorization from the owners of the property to make these applications. All right, you're sworn. Just please have a seat and speak into the microphone. So, Mr. Santos, you actually operate on North Bedford Road, the existing Santos. building. That's in the we next door shopping shop. center. Is that right? That is correct. So you're moving out of that location into what was formerly the TD Bank. You're going to have a Dunkin' Donuts with a drive through now to utilize the bank's drive through That is correct. And you're also going to put in uh, some complimentary uh, convenience store items. That is correct. Why don't you just describe for us very quickly what it is you're proposing there in that building? Normally we put convenience stores and gas stations where you see Dunkin' Donuts. Because the TD Bank was bigger than what I need for a Dunkin', it seemed like a waste of space to leave, you know, 1,500 square feet. So uh, what we do is we usually put a uh, another business like a convenience store where it complements uh, the neighborhood and our business uh, by doing half of it with Dunkin' with some seating and a convenience store obviously with no seating. <coughs> And we split the uh, the cost amongst the two businesses. If they answer your question. Now the convenience store doesn't make sandwiches or anything like that. It's just packaged goods and soft drinks and things like that. Some conveniences do. I do not only because um, it's two businesses under one roof, and we try to avoid competition. So we use packaged foods like beverages and packaged chips uh, and things of that nature. So uh, each business is going to operate at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. That's that's correct. You're going to have a maximum of five to six employees probably during the morning rush in this location. That is correct. How does that split up between the two? Usually, the convenience store, it's pretty much one person for the convenience side, and the remainder of the five or six would be for the Dunkin' side. So the donuts are cooked off site and delivered? Uh, any fried baked products, which is basically uh, donuts, would be uh, done off-site and then shipped in the other. Now, I mentioned that you're operating a Dunkin' Donuts there already on North Beverwick Road, so you're receiving uh, shipments. How do those shipments come in now, and will it be the same? Right now, uh, it's done overnight. I'm assuming they use the existing parking <coughs> front to do the uh, receiving. The new site would actually be better because it'd still be done overnight, but it would be mostly to the uh, left of the property, if you're facing the property, so they wouldn't necessarily be blocking any parking. But it doesn't really make a difference because it's usually done after we close for business, so there is no traffic on site. After this proposal, you're suggesting that uh, the lighting be turned off and turned on well, turned on an hour before you open, turned off an hour after you, half hour after you close? Yeah, normally for safety precautions, we usually do somewhere like a half hour to an hour before we open for business and about a half hour after we close for business so that whoever's there cleaning up and finishing up has sufficient time to exit the building, uh, building with the lighting. What time would that be? Uh, 10 o'clock is the uh, close of business, so the light would stay on until 10.30. How about opening? Open 5 a.m. So the first light would come in, come four. on at 4 o'clock. Yeah. How do you hand, how do you propose handling refuse here? Uh, trash. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm uh, proposing the uh, garbage to be in the far left corner of the parcel. Um, for two reasons: one, it gives the optimum circulation for the vehicle uh, picking up the trash. On, on site without uh, compromising the flow of traffic. And it, ex it can exit the property at the same circulation uh, counterclockwise. <coughs> Whereas right now, the plaza, uh, if you recall, the trash is actually in front of the plaza. And when the trash comes in, they are actually obstructing the parking at the existing location. So this is actually a plus over the existing location. And how often do they pick up? That's enough. Normally, for the projected uh, sales, it would say 
twice a week for trash. I normally type board is once a week. Thank you. I have no further questions for this witness. The light going on at four in the morning, uh, you're not close enough to any residential where that would bother anybody? Right now, if you're facing the building to the right, you have the existing plot. Yeah. To the rear, there's a huge uh, uh, space. Uh, greenery. Yeah. I'll call it grass, whatever. Vegetation. Yeah. Backs uh, off to Lake Hiawatha. Yeah. And to the left is the only uh, residential area to uh, the rear. So. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as lighting goes, we're not adding any exterior lighting, so whatever is there, okay. we're not adding any additional lighting. Okay. So the brightness of that, there's houses across the street, or is there still, is that the, the road? Shopping center across the street. Directly yeah. across to the shopping center, it's not, I thought there was houses, one or two well, houses we'll straight in front. Let's wait for that. All right. There's a lot of mature landscaping on the site. That's not going to be taken away right now. We'll stay there. Uh, the front of the landscaping is not going to change. The two sides are not going to change dramatically. The only area that's going to change a little bit is the landscaping to the right of the building. Because what we usually do is we put uh, two lanes. The one lane will be the, let's call it, your typical uh, menu order, uh, ordering. You look at a menu and you place the order. And we have a second lane where if uh, technology now, we have mobile ordering. So if you place your order on mobile, you don't have to wait in queue. You can go to the second lane, go straight to the uh, window upon the merge and pick up your order without stopping. And then we have a third lane, which is bypass in case there's an emergency and you need to circulate the surrounding uh, perimeter, you can use the third lane as bypass. So we'll be eliminating the only landscaping that would be eliminated would be to the right of the building directly okay. and a little bit to the rear of the building to make the curbing inside uh, and menu boards, things of that nature, put them in place. So the, the fire chief asked about that third lane specifically and requested that it's, uh, you write, do not park or something similar, are we you willing no to problem. do that? Okay. If you want to put no parking or fire, or mm -hmm. anything, which is typical, we don't have a problem with that. Okay. Uh, will there be separate entrances for the convenience store and the Dunkin' Donuts, or will it be open to go between? Uh, we'll have some plans for you to better describe, but I can verbally tell you. There'll be one entrance. As you come in, you'll see the counter for Dunkin' on the far left. Directly in front of you will be a small section of the counter for the convenience store register. And the typical CD that you see in a, a CD bank, that would be your refrigerators and your shelving for your product. Okay. And Duncan has no restrictions on you having a convenience okay. store and a Duncan in the same roof, under the same roof. No, the only thing. Uh, can't sell donuts. I can't compete against myself. Which, yeah. As a business owner, I'm sure you'd agree if you're a business owner, you wouldn't want to compete against yourself. Do you, do you own the one right here, too? I own four percent. The one right here on Cherry Hill. Littleton Road? The uh, gas station? The gas station right here. The BP here. gas station? Not the BP. 46 and I Cherry Hill. Or yeah. down here on the right. Not by Cherry Hill. I'm Hill guessing not. No, 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 no. Just past the whole thing. He's saying yes. He says yes. It's the same. guy said yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's the exact same setup. You walk in, there's the counter. The okay. Store, so right. For context, if anyone's been in that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't get you now. No um, and then you're just basically retrofitting the current building. You're not tearing it down. The, uh, mm -hmm. the, foot, the foot of the building is staying the same. The only thing that we're taking away is right now the TD Bank has a three stall canopy mm -hmm. drive through. Obviously, we don't need a three stall canopy, so we're removing the uh, the canopy itself and it's putting a uh, like a blade. Uh, roof over the drive the window to show keep the water yeah, yeah. exactly that's all questions can't think of any. any members of the public have any questions of this witness I don't think there are members of the public here so. no, no next no, witness Sir, raise your right hand. 
you swear from the testimony you're about to give for the board to yourself, you got? I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name? Sure. My name is John Korak. Last name is spelled C O R A K. Ruse. And you are the. I am the uh, engineer and traffic engineer. And all your licenses are in full force and effect? Correct. And you've been sorry for this board or other boards in the state of New Jersey? Uh, not this board, but other boards throughout the state. Um, Mr. Chairman, the witness is sworn and qualified. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Korak, uh, could you walk us through what we're proposing here? As was mentioned by Mr. Santos, we're not tearing the building down, but we are doing some site modifications. That's correct. Um, I'm going to, for, for I'll be brief with this first exhibit. This is an aerial exhibit um, of the subject property. It was prepared by our office with a date of August 8, 2023. And just for some clarification, because the site is so much consistent with so the existing part date. of the application. So you A1. A1. Aerial exhibit uh, prepared by Stonefield, dated 8 8 2023. Uh, the typical TD Bank site layout, the site that's designed for drive through use. We see strong um, greenery buffering on the left side or the south side of the property. We have the strong uh, landscape buffering again in the rear of the property of the elementary school um, behind that. And then as we move into the plan itself. Well, what's across the street? I can't see. No, I'm sorry. Houses. Oh, is it houses? Across the street is houses in this area, right? We're at the southern, yeah, we're at the southern end of the beachy zone. So we are surrounded um, by the residential zones, the strong buffering provided in the existing condition on the site that would continue to be provided in the future condition. So now as we move onto the site plan itself, you see um, the, the very similar layout to the traditional bank layout, which is generally speaking consistent with drive-through layouts as a whole, right? need to provide the circulation for those vehicles coming around the site. Um, Two-way circulation in the front, and then one-way counterclockwise circulation around the other three sides of the building. Uh, maintaining the existing residential buffers, we have thick evergreen screening. We have a board on board fence, which is on the site itself. We have over 100 feet of screening between the lot line and the, uh, the first, um, you know, the curb line, the rear curb line of the, uh, the back of the site. Um, as far as site improvements goes, as previously testified about the removal of the canopy, we're able to reconfigure some of that space since we only need one lane of drive-through at that pickup point. And then for the north side of the building, the right north side of the site, right side of the building, we do widen that out to provide the two drive-through lanes. The left lane being your typical or traditional um, drive-up lane where you order at a menu board. Um, the right lane the outside lane is a um, basically a pull up for Dunkin' Go customers. Those who've ordered in the app can essentially somewhat shortcut the line. They, they pull up to that second um, order box, tell them that they basically tell them their name, and then continue on. Um, so, an efficient system for processing the queue associated with this project. Um, making sure that I cover a few of the other configurations here. Lighting on the site, so there's existing site lighting. It's all downward oriented, uh, traditional you know, bank style lighting that TD Bank typically features maintaining that. Um, utilities to the site are all currently provided, would be maintained. Stormwater to the site, currently it flows, generally speaking, toward the, uh, toward the west and north. Away from Beverwick Road, there's a, a series of inlets along the exterior of the property, and we would continue to capture storm water um, in those inlets and, and discharge appropriately. Um, overall, from a zoning perspective, um, bulk requirements, there are no changes to the existing setbacks. Um, we have a very small reduction in impervious coverage, 0.4%. So as we reconfigure some of the drive up lanes, we're actually able to um, reduce the total amount of impervious coverage. So a minor benefit there is a 0.4% reduction. Um, and then with you know building coverage, impervious coverage, all of those items are uh, compliant in the existing condition would remain compliant today. Uh, are we going to have any uh, EV spaces made ready, available? Right, we are required to have one um, EV space. We would likely locate that along the, uh, the in the rear of the site with the five proposed parking spaces. 
Uh, don't get in convenience stores. They're high turnover uses, not typical for a larger um, or a longer period of stay with an EV. So we want to locate that uh, where perhaps it'd be an employee or a manager who has an electric vehicle or just out of the way of your high turnover parking spaces in front of the site. So uh, there was a question brought up by Mr. Holloway in his report concerning cross access with the existing shopping center, basically where our common client is leaving mm -hmm. to go to this thing. Uh, we do not feel that is necessary for emergency situation. No, I think that the, you know, to speak to an emergency situation, we do have wide driveway. The additional cross access, I don't think, would add any, uh, any substantial benefit in that regard. It would impact parking on their side of the street, uh, on, the, on their side of the property, as far as being able to provide that cross access. Um, and, and ultimately, we don't think, especially with one tenant leaving to go next door, that that's going to be something that's going to be feasible in the near future. By way of history, there was an attempt a, no a number of years ago to put up uh, intersection in with the street across that's right alongside food town mm -hmm. and Heller would not agree to connecting the three lots so that they could have a traffic light and have access from all those so I ain't going anywhere I can guarantee you that and uh, the <coughs> question that Mr. Holloway brought up was about do we need any spaces for people awaiting their orders? You've had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Santos about that? Yeah, for this site layout in particular, right, we've, we've seen this on a number of other sites where um, when there's when there's not a good way to recirculate the site or where the site is very compact, um, you make designated spaces where if you have a large order and the, the you know, Duncan can't repair it and, and the speed that they'd like they to be able to service the rest of their customers, they would uh, you know, have them park in designated spaces. In this case, the ability to recirculate the site, essentially come back up to that um, dunk and go uh, order window and, and tell them, hey, I, I was the, the customer that you had to recirculate the site. That will cover that need for the site itself. Uh, we, don't, we don't feel that it's necessary based on this particular site layout to have um, those specific spaces that you I have no further. Oh, actually, I do. I'm sorry. I, the rest of the uh, comments by Mr. Holloway, we have no problem accepting those. And no problem addressing those. Uh, number of things related to details and uh, cosmetic and, uh, things in the plans. Regarding the traffic uh, study that you provided to the board, Mr. Chadwick had a question about uh, accidents. Do you have anything to add in that regard? Yeah. The, so we did provide a traffic study to the board. We did see the comment about um, accidents. We did review uh, the state's um, accident database system that's available to consultants, both from the reviewing side and the applicant side. Um, along the frontage, we, we looked at it from 2016 through 2020 when the TV bank was open. Over that five-year period, there were a total of five accidents, so about one a year. wouldn't consider that to be a, a high accident. Um, rate and we wouldn't expect uh, you know that to be exacerbated with this development. There's, there's good lines of sight of the driveway itself. Um, you're able to see clearly in both directions and I wouldn't anticipate um, you know an, an increase in accident rate associated with this project. If I could answer, I have a question just on the uh, striping pavement markings and signage. And sure. I see that there is a do not enter when you come into the site. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have additional signage or you might need additional pavement markings to kind of make people go to the right? Yeah, so so out there today, there is that strike bar and there are do not enter signs um, in the existing condition. Those would be maintained. If if necessary, we could add a, uh, a directional arrow, a right turn arrow. Yeah, I that would, would have do not enter or something. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we we'd certainly restrike that to to pull them that and do not enter striping and we can we can provide something to, to very cleanly delineate that so from the standpoint you were saying about the accidents i realize that one a year is not a big deal um i don't think i think the duncan will have more more consistent traffic than the bank of course and later into the night um was there any thought about maybe putting an entrance on the right side and the exit on the left side just as far as a split yeah enter on this side exit on that side if you're going around 
because I don't know about anybody else, but if you try to leave the food town and make a left to go towards 46, you could be there forever. And my other thought would be, would we consider maybe a right turn only out of the Duncan parking lot so you're not crossing over North Beverwick and going back towards the food town? Because if you go rush hour over there, again, you're going to be sitting there for a while. Just thought. I don't yeah, two, two. No, there's a traffic light. And you just wait for the traffic light to, to change. Not, there's no light there. No, no light. Most no. of them with, with no, the Vale and Beverwick Lake. Yeah. So the yeah, traffic that's, stops. That's, that gives you the opening to make your turn. I spent, I spent thousands of hours on that street. and Trying to make a right turn. No, you, <laughs> the, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> no, for the most part, uh, during the day, um, you can easily make yeah, lefts and rights yeah. out of all those parking lots. Yeah. Forget rush hour. I mean, yeah. I was down on Beverwick Road yesterday at rush hour and there must have been 40 cars backed up for the light at Lakeshore Drive. Right. Um, in the morning you have a, a lot of people that are that are going past it going south on Beverwood Road but my bet is that 90 percent of the people in the right morning now. that are going to this Dunkin Donuts are going to make a right. Yeah, yeah. They're not going left because no, no, they're going to work. That's and right. Work is right. not on Beverwood yeah. Road. Agreed. So um, the other thing I wouldn't want to do is prohibit cars from going left into downtown there. They may want to fit yes. with those businesses. You, yes. you don't want to prevent people from getting to those small it, businesses. It's, it's just care. I mean, you have to, sometimes you have to wait. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. A lot of mornings, when I, a lot of times when I used to pull out of my parking lot, is I, if I saw that I was never going to be able to make a left, I'd make a right, go down yeah, to Grand Union, down. spin around, and then, and then go that way. Yep. So, but it, it's, it's Grand very... Grand Union? Hmm? Did I say Grand Union? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd say Lidl pretty soon. Um, I, th yeah. I think that's about as good as I can answer the left turn question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll entertain the, the the splitting of the driveways. We're looking on the right side. The, the one reason that I wouldn't recommend that um, here is that if a motorist comes in and wants to go to the parking area and they think they're going to get a spot, and that spot is taken, right? Say mm -hmm. it's an SUV and then there's a, a small car behind it. They're either going to be backing up in the aisle to, to determine where to go, or they need to recirculate on the roadway. Right, right. In the current configuration, you're able, you know, it's like a, like a roundabout. You could, you could go yeah. around in circles forever if you really wanted to. Sorry, I guess my thought, my thought on it was entering and exit the same spot possible with the oh, yeah, amount yes. of traffic going in, somebody not paying attention, making a too wide turn into the right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great thought. My other concern with that is the plaza has an entrance on one side, exit on the other side. By doing the second curb cut, it will bring... Right next to each other. Yep, very good point. Yeah, good, another, point. good point. another consideration there. There's, on the north side of the building, is the gas meter, which is effectively in the, you know, right up against the drive through lane. Are you either going to move it or put bollards around it? We'll, we'll, we will either move it or protect it. Okay. We'll, we'll make sure that that, we did see that comment from the uh, from the fire department, we'll, we'll make sure that that, that area is, is protected accordingly. The landscaping you're going to remove, uh, do you have another question anywhere down there? Yeah, I do. Oh, sorry. I'll wait. Okay. Um, I, just, I think for the record, if you could just give us an indication of what you anticipate the queue to be and uh, how are you going to handle it? And, uh. Yeah, typical queue for um, for a modern Duncan operation uh, during those peak periods. Um, at the higher end, I call it eight to nine vehicles. Um, this site can easily stack 12 to 16 uh, within that striped dedicated drive through area, let alone the, the space in front of the parking spaces itself. So queue management on this site, because it is I would say a larger site than a traditional Duncan, right? That's why we do have the convenience store component to it. Um, we're we're going to be able to accommodate that drive-through queue very easily. And just so it should be on our record. Any other questions? Nope. John, you no. have a question? No. I don't know. So. Nope. No. No. Nope. Just a, the, the landscaping that you're going to remove, are we going to put anything back? Yeah, the, so the, the landscaping on the north side is removed for that drive aisle, but right. with the reconfiguration of the uh, drive aisle and parking areas on the south side, um, that 
that opens up an opportunity for dedicated land landscaping. It's certainly, Did you show it on the plan? It's shown as green space. It hasn't. There hasn't been a dedicated. There wasn't landscaping any landscaping plan. proposal, right? Right. There hasn't been a dedicated landscaping plan, but the the net change in impervious coverage we'll need is a reduction on the plan. We'd be happy to provide. So, leaf landscape plan or uh, revised landscaping plan, I guess, which will address uh, the most side is that the west side. This, this, uh, the left side of the page is the south side. South side of the property. Anything else? No. Any members of the public have any questions? No. Nope. Signs are going to be dealt by John. Uh, we'll talk about that next week, Or next week. Thank you. Why raise your right hand. You swear from testimony about the report board to yourself you got? Yes, I do. And for the record, can you say and spell your name? My name is Michael Elkin, E-L-K-I-N. I work with G.K. and A. Architects. We prepared the plan, the architectural plan. <coughs> and all your licenses are in full force and effect. Yes. You've been sworn before this board and other boards and safety insurance. Mr. Chairman, the witness is sworn and qualified. So, Mr. Elkin, we've covered a lot of ground here so far. Why don't we just tie it in a bow with uh, showing the board this floor plan you came up with. Let's go through that quickly so we can get to the signage. Yes, uh, the floor plan as was discussed previously, at the front of the building in the center is the entrance. Uh, you come in the front to the right is the convenience store. Directly in front of you are the registers for the convenience store. On the right you can see the shelving, the uh, refrigeration. To the left is a, is a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, it'll be approximately 14 seats in the front, the service area, like you normally when you go up to the counter, and the whole back is basically the back end of the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, there's storage, uh, the back corner, there's some storage here in the Dunkin', and the uh, bathroom facilities are behind the coolers for the, uh, for the convenience store. Uh, so as you can see, anybody walking in, go either way, then go both ways, uh, it's, it's wide open. So the only restroom there is the yeah, two, is two, two uh, bathrooms. That's, that's for customer use as well? Excuse me? For customer use? That's Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is the uh, front elevation. And the left side elevation, which uh, will have the drive up window. The only real changes to the front, uh, there'll be no storefronts for the stores. And the existing glazing that you see on top is existing, that will remain. Uh, the signage, there'll be a sign for the uh, uh, convenience store on the right side. At the top, there'll be a sign for Duncan. And on the right side is the new logo type signage for the drive through which just says drive through and it has a cup. Uh, the plans you have in front of you have the old signage. This is a brand new signage that we see from Duncan. The signage... You're going to have to mark that as... Uh, yeah. Mark that as the signage itself is actually, from what you see on your plans, is a little bit smaller. Uh, the Duncan sign has been condensed. Uh, it's different, slightly different graphics. Uh, the drive-through sign is a lot smaller than what you see on yours. In fact, I think it's a big improvement. There is a the monument sign out front that'll be the Duncan sign will be placed there. Is that a new color? The colors, yeah, the color that was I'm glad you brought that up. The other change are uh, the colors are slightly different than the previous Duncan colors, a little bit more muted, believe it or not. 
but in, they're in generally the same range, uh, just a little bit different. That's just going in place at a TD bank sign. It's there now. Yes, yes correct. You touch the bulb of the signs. You can see the colors. It's the orange, and I don't know. I guess that's a purple color. They have gotten rid of the D, what they used to use was a DD logo. The logo is now a coffee cup with a D in it. Is it of a similar size as the yeah. logo? Yeah. Is it a similar size of the uh, sign there? Yes. All right. Not I can mark that as A3, and I don't think I have it in the question. No. Okay. Do you want to mark those last two as A3? Uh, well, this has got the color scheme on it. So the yeah, basically, the one before it mark is a. I, I you mark. Well, I, I the, a two. It's a whole package. Yeah, the whole package is a two. All right, the whole package. So finally, there's just uh, the one that's got the You drive up through Height Gate uh, again. Used to be a DD in the center, which I believe is what's on yours. It's changed a little car. It's another part of their upgrade of the signage, and they're a little uh, small. Uh, Directional signs. And all right, thank and you. that's basically it. Thank you. Great. No further questions. Thank you. No. So there are there are sign variances required. Yes, yeah, there are. There are. Not the size. De minimis. They, it's de minimis. John will go through it very quickly. Okay. We got. Right. We got. You got it. Okay. Any other questions? Members of the public, no questions. Next witness. Uh, sir, raise your right hand. You swear firm testimony about you before the board's true self. You got? I do. For the record, can you state and spell your name? Sure. Hi, everyone. John McDonough, MC, capital D-O-N, O-U-G-H, project planner. The fact that you qualified. Yes. Testified for this board and other boards of state of New Jersey. Correct. Mr. Chairman, the witnesses uh, sworn and qualified. I'll be very brief. We're going to let the pictures do the talking here. This is a site that has excellent suitability to accommodate the development that's before you. For two main reasons. Number one, this is a A3. Up to the record, you're, what's being passed out is A3. It's going to be a four page exhibit. These are recent aerial drone photographs of the subject's property. And they just reinforce from a bird's eye what you saw in John's aerial. Uh, that this site has excellent, um, I'll say, verticality in terms of the buffering on the sides of it, particularly on the residential side, and that's uh, kudos to good planning on the town side. You can see, particularly in the second page of A3, the buffering that separates the subject site from the residential neighbor. Uh, we are right on the edge of a, re a residential zone. We now have established here evergreen trees that are in full leaf year-round top to bottom, all the way down to the ground. There's no um, loss of vegetation at the bottom of those trees. They're a good 40, 50 feet tall, uh, so they serve as a nice green wall from the subject property, separating it from the residential use that's adjacent. And what's important here on this particular piece of property are there are a lot of things that could go here. This is certainly not going to be more intense than what could be, including re any flavor of retail store, retail shops, restaurants, a brew pub could go here, that artist uh, instruction that you just heard about could go here as well, uh, offices, and then of course you've got permitted conditional uses including the uh, auto service station, a kennel could go here, and banks with drive through a permitted conditional use. That's what we've got. We've got a building with a drive through that's already there. This is a very easy fit up. Uh, so D1 is justified by virtue of the site condition, the site context. We're in a mixed area. Um, we do have interrelated D1 relief to have two uses in one building, this co-branding concept. We've seen Duncan pair up with Baskin Robbins, the ice cream. Um, and not atypical as well to see Duncan think about a, a gas station with a convenience aspect as well. So this co-branding is, is common and typical and not something that would cause any substantially adverse impacts to the site or to the surrounding neighborhood. 
those are the two D1s. I think the board can certainly move favorable on site suitability, on special reasons that this is going to provide and promote the general welfare with a service use or actually service uses on a service corridor. It's going to promote efficient land use, variety of land uses, and a positive aesthetic. A nice name brand there is what's really the gateway to your downtown on Beverick. The master plan talks about Beverick as being the commercial hub of Lake Hiawatha, and certainly putting a name brand there at the gateway will, will reinforce that as well. So we've got positive aesthetics, we've got numerous positives here, and based on the testimony before you, very little, if any, impact on the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, the site will flow, will function, will operate safely and efficiently with adequate queue in terms of what's there now. And uh, for those reasons, we think the board can move favorably on both D1 aspects of this. Interrelated, we've got the sign package, which is very tasteful here. You saw the elevations and the fact that um, this new concept of, of Duncan is re relatively modest with the coffee cup and the drive through. That's really what's triggering the extra relief here is to have that second sign, which is more of a wayfinding or, or directional type of sign on the building. That's triggering the relief to have two signs on the building as opposed to one. And there's also some relief related to the size of those signs and to the height of those signs being above what the minimum requirement would be. The overall sign package is tasteful. It fits nicely and integrates well within the backdrop of the architectural theme here. It's going to promote brand familiarity, customer expectations, and is not going to be excessive or, or gaudy in the context of the, the overall landscape. The relief for the freestanding sign in the front is actually to have a freestanding sign that's too low. Your minimum monument size requirement is eight feet, and I think this rises up to six feet, 10 inches. So the applicant is actually, in this case, asking the board to move on a sign that's lower than the uh, minimum requirement. Okay, Mr. McDuff, isn't it true that for signs, anything with the corporate brand or logo on it is classified as a sign here in Park Sydney? That is true. So, the cup, so everything in the drive-through, all the branding you see in the drive-through, all around, gets counted as a sign. That is so true. When we're noticing for a number of signs, it's really being generated by that. Exactly, yes. Paul said we think that's reconcilable under the C2 balancing. The benefits of the application as a whole would substantially outweigh the detriments. As I said, brand familiarity, customer expectations, all being advanced here. This is a really nice fit up of this TD Bank, which has been vacant now for two years. It's not contributing anything positive to the uh, Beverwood Corridor, and so this will revitalize and put unproductive land back to functional use, which is spot on with our goals of, of planning. It's also spot on with your master plan, goal number five, which recognizes the importance of North Beverwick and actually encourages reuse of vacant and underutilized <coughs> buildings. So this is on point here as well, notwithstanding the relief for the, the use itself uh, as a fast food restaurant in the B3 zone. Thank you, Mr. I have no further questions. Questions of Mr. McDonough? Nope. No, no. Nope. Yes, Bernie, go ahead. The, uh, the, the border between the residence and the property, it, it, it looks from the picture you showed that there's no landscaping there. Do you think there should be some? I'm just going to look at the top down view on the last page. Um, I believe that landscaping, those evergreen trees are on. Oh, you're talking about the gap? Yeah, the gap. The gap, yeah. So I'm going to gap through that. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe that's where you can put some replacement. Yeah, put some trees in there. Carbon lighting. Yeah. Nothing that prevents putting some vegetation. This thing had headlight, headlights going into the next. We can fill the gap. Well, that you covered over out of the revised landscape. Correct. Thank you. I have a question. All the signage has to do with Dr. Donuts. This other convenience use of retail use, whatever it may be, are you going to be coming back for signs for that? Well, that's a it's a great question. And I think there actually is. Let me just catch up to the revised plan. 
think there's relief related to the Victory Mart area. Is that correct? No, I, think I didn't see anything. That's why I'm asking. It's just the numbers. Just the numbers. Yeah. Okay. So when you get a tenant, whatever it may be, you're going to come back and see us. No, he's, a, he's, he's the operator. He's operating operator, the whole thing. It is the big yeah, but you don't have any signs for it for that side of the building. Yeah, there was one. Yeah, yeah, one. There was? Yeah. 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 It said Victory Mart. Yeah, there's not going to be a sub tenant. It's all uh, one operator. Okay. All right. Yeah. There. there it is. Victory Mart. Just like the one, where is it? Across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Where am I? Right over there. Over there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> what, the Exxon station? Yeah. yeah. Is that where your victory yeah. mort is? BP. BP. All right. Okay. okay. Any other questions? No. 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 Questions by the public? I hear none. See none. I will rely on the testimony I have submitted and ask the board to approve what I think is correct. Any members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to this application in support of this application? I hear none. See none. Do we need to go into conference, guys? Nope. No. 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 So they, uh, it, it's it's a good application for a building that is sitting vacant right now. Is there good improvement? I, know, you know, I have a lot of history on North Beverly Road, and I'm convinced this is going to be an asset to the to the road. And my wife. Um, so in frame of resolution. Application 23 column 08 Duncan, 430 North Beverly Road, Lot 48, Lot 32, Zone B-3 to grant a, a site plan B with variance for the Duncan Donuts and convenience store with the drive through Second John Schools. Any discussion or call the roll? Berkeley. Yes. Joshua. Yes. Kaplan. Yes. Mattarella. Yes. Three. Yes. Ready. Yes. Hurricane. Yes. Results of variance is granted. Thank you. Second. We'll go much quicker with the board's intelligence. I would like to. Uh, five minute break? We need a five minute break. Okay, great. Could use some coffee, I'd say. Okay, we're calling case uh, 2309. This is at uh, 199-239, the Littleton Road. The Santander Bank, right? Yes. Oh. yes. I never knew. I didn't know. When did that bank close? Oh, two years. years. Really? <laughs> Boy, I'm out of the loop. So this is the relocation of the Dunkin' Donuts right down the road from where we're sitting right now, down on Littleton Road, from its existing place into where the bank was. And... Uh, I'm going to ask for Mr. Santos to be recalled. I guess we need to re-swear. Okay. Uh, sir, is your right hand you swore from the testimony about the provided to yourself you got? And you're the um, operator of the site. Have a seat. Speak into the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Santos, you, uh, you're operating the existing Dunkin' Donuts. You're going to be operating the new one. That is correct. And this new one, as I said, is moving into what was formerly a bank. You are incorporating the larger space that was the bank from the smaller space to where you're at now. It's allowing you to redesign the Dunkin' Donuts into the more modern Dunkin' Donuts with the new finishes, the new colors, the new layout, the iced coffee out of the beer tap, all the bells and whistles that they do. So, uh, that is correct. It also allows you now access to a rear door, which you did not have in the shopping center. That is correct. The existing location, albeit smaller than the new uh, unit, it also does not have a rear door. So not only does the guest walk through the front door, but also the shipments come through the front door. So this allows more space and the uh, addition of a rear door. And, of course, the other main addition is the uh, drive through, but all the food and all the materials, everything that you get for the Dunkin' Donuts is going to be received in the same manner it is in the shopping center. The only difference in the shopping center now, the only difference being now it's coming through the rear door. Is that correct? That is correct. You're currently now, the tractor trailer parks in front of the main plaza because that's the only logical place because they're receiving uh, the deliveries of the front door. 
whereas now they can actually park the truck the trailer on the side uh, preferably where the parking spaces is leaving some flow in between and they could receive to the rear and less impact for the uh, customer using the plug. Thank you. You don't have anything else you want to add, right? No. I have no further questions. Are deliveries during hours of business hours? It can be, but we do have, uh, because of COVID and everything that changes our life uh, during COVID, we're also allowed to take uh, uh, overnight deliveries. So we can do it off peak hours yeah. or late hours or overnight hours, whatever is convenient for them. I mean, I would think it would be kind of crowded with. I'm sorry? I would think it would be kind of crowded on that site with tractor trailers. And uh, right now, that's the only choice we have. I know, right but now. Given the circumstances, uh, we have started a lot of our stores doing overnight. Yeah. Uh, the way it works is the uh, DCP, which is our distribution center for government donuts, they come in do the delivery overnight, whatever's frozen, put the freezer, refrigeration, put in refrigeration, and dry stock and leave it in the middle of the room. When our staff comes in, first thing they do is they pop up the lights, turn on the ovens, and put the orders away, and they start the course of business. What's the ovens for? Sir? What's the ovens used for? Uh, although we don't bake on site, we, do, uh, we don't fry on site, we bake on site. Meaning your muffins are baked on site, your croissants are baked on site, um, missile cookies, whatever, uh, it comes in uh, free frozen stack, so it's like a uh, raw dough, and we just pluck it in the oven and we cross it, and that's how you get the big product. Okay. Any other questions? No. No. Members of the public, any questions? No. Nope. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Mr. Cora. To raise your right hand, you're sure for the testimony about to give for boards true stuff you got for their state here. I do. Uh, name for the record, John Korak, last name C O R A K. You're a sworn um, engineer, you've been qualified before this board, and also all your license are in force effect. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is qualified and sworn. It is really like coming into town. So, Mr. Korak, we have a, a drive through existing, but we had to change it for the Dunkin' Donuts. And that's what's generating our appearances. You can just run through that real quick. And of course, now we have received comments from the county. So let's talk about all that. Correct. So we've received comments from the county. We've also had a little bit additional coordination with Duncan um, relating to how they prefer their driveway, their their drive through to be designed for optimal efficiency. Do have an exhibit that we out. Oh, sorry. This is a day one. A1 is an amended site plan sheet um, dated July 13, 2023. Um, it replaced sheet H4 within our plan set. I'll go through essentially the changes from mm -hmm. the existing condition to the proposed condition, including the modifications to this exhibit. Of course, there is an existing drive through at the, the bank location. However, meeting with the Duncan Standards, want to be able to provide, um, of course, the, the location to order the order box as well as the, uh, the secondary order location or, or pickup area for the Duncan Go customers which is shown in that side-by-side -side, um, drive-through configuration where the left side is your traditional ordering area, right side is your dunk and go. Um, that area is separated by uh, what's called out now as a landscaped island. Currently at the drive-through for the bank there's a curb and that's what keeps the parking and the drive aisle separate from the drive-through lane. Here we're able to, to increase that, um, provide a landscape island. Um, by ordinance it is required to be five feet there are sections of it that are four foot wide, so we are non-compliant uh, for about 20 feet or so of that uh, of that island, but then more than that five foot compliance throughout the rest of that landscape island area. Um, we've also reconfigured reconfigured the parking along the, the one-way drive aisle. So presently the site has access to full movement driveway, um, toward the middle of the site in front of the, the main part of the shopping center uh, and then an ingress only as you move east and then an 
exit only as you head all the way to the east of the site. Um, so we've reconfigured the, the parking spaces um, that, that was necessary because of the location of the drive-through. Um, between the change in parking demand associated with Duncan and the change in the parking supply, um, it was a, a three-space reduction in requirement, three-space reduction in supply. So we're still at the same, um, I guess, difference between requirement and supply, which presently on the site is a 12-space deficiency, which would continue as an existing nonconformity in the proposed condition. Um, as far as the county comments go, the main thing the county asked for was at that main full movement driveway. Right now, there's a there's really a short stub um, divider between the entrance and the exit. They asked us to increase that to provide a little bit of throat. And because we're actually shifting that internal drive aisle a little bit further into the site, we're able to accommodate that and accommodate the movements in the site very clearly. Um, and so that, that design has been put in place to satisfy the county's comments. Uh, we're also designated two um, Duncan drive-through waiting spots. Um, essentially, this is a site that doesn't have you know, a full 360 circulation for the drive-through. So if there is a large order, someone comes to the pickup window, the, the Duncan staff looking to keep that drive-through moving, they may have a customer go to um, one of those two waiting spots to, to wait and have their food brought out to them by an employee. Very typical um, for, for drive-through restaurants. Duncan and the like. Um, aside from that, that, that generally summarizes the changes on the site itself. Um, the, the proposed parking realignment that we've done, the existing spaces do meet that 10 foot front yard setback requirement. The proposed ones um, are closer, they're 5.5 feet. However, the, the sight lines from the driveway are not impacted by the parking spaces. And I think overall the layout functions better in that regard. Um, and then there are a couple of existing nonconformities that would not be modified as a result of this project. We're keeping the same building coverage. We're keeping the same rear yard setbacks, uh, keeping the parking toilet space deficiency consistent from existing to proposed. Overall, this layout works very well for Duncan. I think from a site plan perspective, traffic's parking and circulation perspective, um, this plan lays out well to accommodate the, the Duncan drive through. And it's a use that's already on the site, has an existing customer base, and now it's a, it's a new amenity and sort of a new way that uh, customers are getting their coffee in the morning. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I have no further questions. Which is except to say you have no problems with Mr. Holloway's presentation. That will assess all comments by Mr. Holloway. That's correct. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, so uh, this particular drive through is one side for the dunk and go and one side for regular customers. Or is it two sides here for regular customers to merge into one? It is the left aisle is the left um, drive-through is traditional, and then the right one is the dunk and go. Right. And how many how many cars? Because th this is my concern with this spot. There's not a lot of space for a, a queue. So how many cars in queue do we have before we run into a problem with regular cars going through? That's my only hang-up on this one. It's it's about 11 to 12 vehicles. Um, you know, 11 normal, 12 if they they inch up bumper to bumper. Um, you know, at, at other sites that we've studied, we see that queue typically around eight to nine during those peaks. And with uh, you know, with the next gen stores from Duncan, right? With, you know, the iced coffee on tap and the efficiencies built into a to a new layout, they're able to um, you know move move customers quickly through the drive through. Yeah, it just with Littleton Road being what it is right there, mm -hmm. you'd kind of see cars, cars stuck in the middle of the eastbound side or westbound side, eastbound side. Right, and that, that's certainly something we want to avoid, and that's, you know, as part of this design, um, you know, wh wh how we've laid out that stack to, to try and accommodate it as best possible. Did you, did you show a stacking diagram at all? On this revised plan i don't have one unfortunately we, did you have it on the, the, original? the original one yes it was it was a little bit more is about 12 to 13. why is there such a separation between the two windows pick up windows essentially the yeah so there's the two pads there with the essentially that's 
the, the separation distance to have someone pay at that first window. And if there's someone at the the next window, there's still room to continue to move up. Oh, and the wing a little bit. Yeah. Mr. Sassetti, what, what, do, you, do you have any familiarity with uh, how this site works? I need to make one card. The It's a double menu. It's not a order maker. Uh, these, it's supposed to be two menu boards. Yeah. So it, like, let's use Beverick for example. It is one mobile lane and one regular order menu. But this one, we're doing two menu boards. No, that was my question. Yeah. It is. Right. I just wanted to clarify. Oh, I apologize. And I apologize for the, the confusion. This was changed by um, the brand. Originally, uh, originally, we were going to go with just uh, the same typical that we did in Bedford. But every time the brand puts a new uh, drive through they learn from it. So every time we do another uh, drive through uh, especially a double drive through they learn from the past, uh, what do you call it, experiences and keep you know, getting a better outcome. On this particular case, with a dual window, because remember, Bedrock only had one window, with a dual window, which is one pay and one receive, similar to McDonald's, for example, and by having two menu boards, you expedite the traffic a lot. Right. So for example, if person A is placing the order, the other one's moving. Person B is placing the order, the next one's moving. And that gives us a better throughput by having the two windows and two order. It's an extra expense, but it helps us with the throughput. throughput if that helps. So you'd be stacking in both sides. Exactly. Yeah. So it isn't uh, like an on-the-go, I place the order. Although if you place an on-the-go, yeah. you can use either lane. You just wait in queue. But by doing it this way, we do twice the volume at the same time. In the same space. You don't space. lose that 30 seconds of moving the vehicle. Thank you, Mr. So is this plan going to be changed again? Sorry? Is this plan that we have going to be changed again? No. In terms of your, what you just stated? That is the final... This is correct. This is correct. That's why I wanted to go up there. Right. Sure we're right. You answered the question I had. Yep. How fast you can move them through. I am, I'm confused. All right, the, the plan that you just handed me, I guess the windows are where the where the where the two lanes are. Just down here, here and here. Oh, yeah, no. you know, point out the order yeah. boards. Okay, so the order boards are toward the right. There are the two concrete pad areas. These are both order boards that can take All right, so you pull up, up to the order board to order and you got a choice of one or the other All right. tell me explain to me where the queue the cars are going to are going to back up you're going to if you have seven or eight cars you're in the middle of a little the road if, if you have seven or eight cars back behind the order board yes yeah. but that's not typical of the current day duncan operations now that they've ironed out some of the inefficiencies from COVID. Right. We've seen Duncans that have backed out, or that have had that kind of queuing. Um, and so with- How do you with, prevent it? So preventing it, multiple it ways here, right? One, it's the two order boards, helps take orders quicker, move cars through the system faster. Two, with the um, sort of the inline, the pay at one window and then pick up food at the next window, they're able to increase that transaction rate. Um, and so they're able to process more cars that. quicker. I don't know how that increases the rate. I guess they, they know better because they. It, it's, it's just less time spent at one You're spot making two the stops and you're talking to two different people. So to me, that extends the time. But right, but when you have to make payment and then wait for the food, it, it has the ability to cause a singular point of delay that backs everyone up. Whereas if you're mm -hmm. able to. You're looking to keep I'm still more concerned with the order report. So. You're going to have at least five or six cars waiting to order. It takes a minute to order, a minute or a minute to a two to order. Typically, not that long to order, and and for the for the vehicle that does take longer, you should, that's you why know, you're assuming second. that everybody knows exactly what they want without looking at the order board. Well, during 
during some people the, have to, during some people have to read. times when we have the, the most traffic, that for the most part, that's the case. People know what coffee right, they but, want in the morning. But I'm not concerned about the most part. I'm concerned about the part where the cars are backed up on the Littleton Road. Right, and so I think that at a lower frequency time, people who come in and don't necessarily know what they want, that's also not part of that peak morning rush. I'll take your example. Let's say you do have that one interview. You really need to talk to a microphone. Because you didn't before. The reason why the second menu board is uh, important is for the exact reason you're saying. Let's say you do have uh, one particular customer that is taking their time because he maybe doesn't come often and he needs to look at the menu. While he's ordering, keep in mind that the other one keeps moving. So by having the two able to order, one line keeps on progressing while that one customer, so let's say for sake of argument that one customer takes four minutes, the other line still continues moving. That's why it's important. We couldn't, we didn't want to do it on the go on this case because then you're talking about one lane at a standstill and if let's say you had no on the go, no one would be using the second lane. By doing two, you keep, if one gets a hang up, the other one keeps moving. If there's no hang up, then they both keep moving. Is there going to be any on the goes on the goes going through that lane? They can, but remember, on the goes, there's no ordering. They just fly through. They get to the window. My name is Joe. Assuming your order is ready. Your order is well, <laughs> If they're doing what they're supposed to, they <laughs> you're not placing it on Littleton Road. Road. <laughs> right. If that helps answer your question, that's the important piece. It me. doesn't really alleviate my concern of cars stacking up, waiting to order at a busy time in the morning when there's a lot of traffic and there's bad cars with, with the rear ends sticking out into Littleton Road. That's the reason why we went this route because, first of all, it's a much more expensive to do the second menu board. It's not just a sign, now it's all digital. So you're talking about a second line, you're talking about anywhere from 70 to 90,000 just for the equipment for the second line. So no one does it if they don't need it. Because of the sensitivity, um, you know, it is a family business and it is a franchise, but we take pride in doing what's best in the time that we work. So it doesn't matter if it's East Hanover uh, or Pacific, we take pride in doing what's best for the community, not just what's best for us. And this particular location, to address any concerns of that manner, that's why we're proposing two. So if there is that hiccup, we have kind of a buffer to take care of that. And my other question, you talked about the rear door being able to take the orders through the rear door. Deliveries. Deliveries, I meant, from, from, the, from the Duncan. Yep. Where's the truck going to park, especially if it's during the day when you've got people trying to order? Right now, I just confirmed with my son-in-law, general manager. As of today, all the deliveries are done overnight. Okay. And Sort of when the stores are closed. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't make any difference. Either. So that can be part of the resolution. I'd be happy to consider that. Okay. All right. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody, Anybody else? Nope. I, I have a question regarding access to the smaller building. Because mm -hmm. um, let's say that parking lot is full and you're parking in the big lot and walking to the smaller building. Sure. Um, um, just the safety of pedestrians walking there. I don't know. Uh, well, there used to be a, um, a marked out path. Mm -hmm. um, now is there going to be landscaping in the island? or? Is it, is, is it previously, right, there was the curb and then the marked out path, which you know, gave, gave somewhere to walk, but not necessarily for truly protected area. So we, could, we could work to... Uh, just right part of that drive aisle to, to help, help accommodate some of those pedestrian movements. Is there any What's in that smaller building? Yeah. Smaller buildings, a number of dominoes. Is where the dominoes is. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, a couple of little restaurants. What is proposed yeah. for the island? Is it landscape? Apparently it's landscaping. It's like a low shrubbery type thing? Right. It, we haven't designed the landscaping. I, I presume that would be mm. a condition um, to, to provide a landscaping. You can't have a 65 car, it's like Chick-fil-A. 
In terms of the property, it doesn't look like the owner of that site has invested in landscaping of any sort. <laughs> I mean, it is. I mean, that's kind of the center of town. Yeah, but right around the edges is the dirt. Well, you probably can't keep vegetation because when it snows and they plow all the salt nice up onto the curb, it kills all the plants. You can put something out there that's other than dirt. Well, you can, put, like the, mud you can put the asterisk on it. Uh, you can put stones. Oh. Decorative stone, yeah. Look a lot better than the mud puck. Any other questions? No. no. Next witness. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have another exhibit as part of this packet detailing the signs that was uh, shared by Mr. Elk. And I'm just going to reference those because it's the same again we did before. If anyone has any questions about signage on the site, we can bring Mr. Elk to answer those questions. Otherwise, I'm going to go right to Mr. McDonald. Okay. I'm going to raise your right hand to affirm testimony about the give for the board. So, thank you, God. Yes, I do. All licenses are in fact yes, they are. qualified. Mr. Yes. Chairman, the witnesses are qualified and sworn as an expert. Thank you, Mr. McDonough. You're familiar with the application and all the good stuff that we talked about. Sure, we've moved to the B3 uh, neighborhood commercial zone to the B2 highway commercial zone. We're dealing with three categories of relief here. One is a D, but it's not a D1. It's a D3. It's a conditional use variance to allow for a fast food restaurant, which is permitted in the zone, but it's only permitted as part of a pad site or freestanding building. We're looking for relief to have this use as an end cap as opposed to a freestanding building. I think you've got a good predicate of evidence to prove that this can flow and function safely and efficiently as an end cap as opposed to a pad site on this center. Also related to the relief is the fact that the islands are four feet wide as opposed to five feet wide. That's to provide separation. That's the planning intent. Uh, probably provide some landscaping in there as well. We can certainly accommodate a landscape plan within a four foot width and achieve that adequate separation. So the applicant's asking the board to move on one foot in terms of that conditional use of relief. Second bundle of relief pertains to parking. Again, from John's testimony, I think you got a good predicate there. Parking setback is going to be as close as 5.5 feet to the front property line whereas 10 feet is the minimum required. It's basically following the existing setback that's there now. Some of those parking stalls are actually at zero feet, so these are not going to be any closer than spaces that are already there. The parking count is a deficit of 12, which is an existing condition, so while the parking requirement goes up, the parking supply is going up as well, so we maintain that 12 space delta. And then finally, the only reason why we need signage relief is because your ordinance allows for one sign per building. The applicant is asking for two here, but the existing bank uh, has two signs as well. So it's basically a continuation of uh, a previously approved or an existing non-conforming condition. Um, all said, the project positives here would substantially outweigh the negatives. You can see from the photographs, I remember this as the old Grand Union site, um, has always had detail associated with it. This is going to give a nice face, a nice street presence with a, a grand name uh, along the roadway. It is going to fill up the space and put it back into functional use. Again, another service use along the service corridor and a retrofit of existing space. This is not new built per se, so that's going towards the playing goal for a variety of land use in appropriate locations and efficient land use and a positive aesthetic. This will give a nice fresh image to the, to the corridor. Based on all of the testimony, all relief can be granted without any substantially adverse impacts. This is another net positive for the community, and I would offer that the tax criteria for relief. Thank you, Mr. McDonough. I have no further questions. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I had 430 at 1030. I'm sorry? I had 430 at 1030. That was. That's your other one. 430 at 1030 was the other one. Yeah. This one is uh, 4 a.m. business, 10 p.m. business. So it would be 30 minutes out at a time in terms of lights. Uh, Three. The reason this quarter is busy. A little, little more active, yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Right. Chaz, you got any questions? No. The, uh, you good? Engineer's report, you're going to uh, respond to those comments. Everybody's good? Yep, good. Members of the public, I see none. That's it, Joe. <laughs> I will rely on the testimony provided. And you did a great job, by the way, if you don't say so yourself. Joe, what was the last time you bought a bed out? And admitted to it. <laughs> Just some of them aren't quite as good as others, right? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, no conference? No conference. No, there's no members of the public here, so. Uh, no conference? Nope. Everybody else is okay. Then. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't seem like it's a... There's going to be, a, there's probably going to be some times when that, well, those did. lines are going to have a, have a blip. I just you know remember that. all the conversations we had on New Road. Oh, come on. I was such a different, different <laughs> yeah, animal. My God. Well, I just but on this one, there's parking space for people. Yeah, it's in the yeah there's no, the lines that, are yeah, backed yeah, up. You park your car and you go inside. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't have that option there. And, for and plus those people in that, uh, that new apartment complex, where they can't park their cars. We'll have to do <laughs> 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 yeah, all the people that visit their parking will be getting a donut and going yeah, across. Yeah. Okay, frame of resolution, someone, please. Okay, application 23 colon 09, Duncan 199-239 Littleton Road, block 393.01, lots 1, zone B-2. Recommend granting a uh, site plan uh, D variant for Dunkin' Donuts and convenience store with a drive through. Any okay. qualifiers for that or no? No, I get that. Subject to additional landscaping to okay. uh, be provided. Were you uh, you're considering putting some mine stripe for pedestrian path? Oh, yes, thank you. Okay. 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 And that. And Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion or call the roll? Berkowitz. Yes. Joshua. Yes. Kaplan. Yes. 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 Ready. Yes. Yes. Results is vanished. Granted. On um, one quick note, does anybody remember when there was a, um, a pool the pool hall there? It's my yes. I had I had played pool. Yes. You're showing your age. You, was that one of yours, John? Smiles. Smiles. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Mark Wiener was part Mark of Wiener it. Mark Wiener was part of it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, we're discussing previous <laughs> applications. When's this house? Um, Are we done? Um, motion to adjourn. Some of them. All in favor? Aye. Everybody. Opposed? Well, that was a very productive meeting, gentlemen. Let's go to the